Ben sen de. Hello, uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever your time, wherever you are, uh, to this very special uh, show on JK TV. Um, it's uh, uh, organized mainly by Let Kashmiris Decide. 
Uh, this is a, a very recently uh, formed group. Uh, it, this group actually uh, was um, formed by Claire Bidwell uh, soon after uh, the August 5th, um, 2019, when uh, the BJP government of India um, actually just basically using their uh, uh, democratic mandate given by Indian voters to uh, bypass all the legalities, all the international um, obligations. Uh, they uh, just sent more troops in already um, one of the most militarized zone in the world, uh, that is Kashmir. They sent more troops there and they locked down every household and uh, disconnected all the communication means. And uh, they, they declared that Kashmir is no longer a autonomous state. Kashmir is a union territory of India. And uh, um, so all, all, all basically rights were taken away just like that. And uh, uh, to, to, uh, to um, kind of prevent any resistance, uh, they then um, cut off the communication and locked people inside their homes. And that situation still uh, prevails. And obviously, uh, recently, the corona lockdown um, gave them more um, sort of justification to keep people in. And uh, uh, although gr gradually then some of the communication was restored and a very weak internet connectivity is also available, uh, but people are under uh, constant suppression and uh, repression from the occupying forces uh, in that part of Kashmir. So in reaction to that, one uh, woman uh, who is our guest here, Claire Bedwell, she was, uh, uh, before that, she was uh, uh, on, on uh, her normal trip in India where she met a Kashmiri um, uh, shopkeeper and uh, uh, they stayed in touch uh, because she bought some uh, stuff from him and when she asked uh, but she, because she told me uh, that's why I, i'm giving this background um and when she asked him how is his family and he said i don't know so what do you mean so i can't communicate with them because all communication is cut off so why and this is you know when they gave the reason and she you know, could, couldn't understand why, how it can happen in this day and age. And when she did some research and she found out that, yeah, that this is happening. And uh, then she started uh, this idea that we should do something about that. So this was a reaction from one individual who then um, connected so many people and, uh, uh, put, you know, brought them together. Um, in uh, in, in uh, let kashmir decide group which is um, a, i think thousands of members now and uh, so so today the, basically is the launch of that group's uh, first major activity and that is uh, uh, having tea in solidarity so i welcome all my guests first here and then we will obviously ask claire more uh, uh, about the event and everything. So we have with us Janab Lord Nazir Ahmed Sab, Lord of Rotherham, uh, is a Lord member of House of Lord, um, uh, British House of Lord, and uh, we have uh, Paul Bristow, uh, who is uh, a, a member of British Parliament, and uh, he is. Uh, 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 yeah, he's, he's, he's a parliament member. And then we have Sajid Karar, uh, who is U.S. President uh, Trump's advisor. And uh, we have, obviously, Claire Bidwell. And we have uh, Choudhury Vakas Akram. Uh, he's a media coordinator of, uh, for uh, um, Let Kashmiri Decide. And uh, he made his gun. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, 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 welcome everybody, and we have Karen and Makala. 
uh, who are representative for uh, let Kashmiri decide from uh, Toronto. So everybody, welcome to the show, please. And uh, uh, I am really sorry for a little delay in the starting and uh, a very silent start. Uh, but I hope that uh, we will make up for that in, in, in the coming time. And uh, firstly, firstly, I, I would like to ask uh, um, uh, Lord Nazir Ahmed, um that uh, given given the situation in Indian occupied Kashmir, and uh, given the fact that historically Britain been very very outspoken uh, uh, against the human rights violations. And it, it, there, is, there had been a tendency of linking trade with the uh, human rights records. Why is not happening uh, that now uh, in case of India, what India has done in Kashmir recently, but obviously what they are doing in the last 30 years uh, since this uh, popular uprising was adopted in 1980s? You're on mute, Lord Nazir. Uh, I I'm not on mute now. I hope. Um, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know. Thank you very much for organising this uh, uh, conference. Uh, I have uh, shared a platform with uh, Sajid Tarar Saab uh, last week um, from the same organisation, and I'm delighted to be here uh, because I think it's very important that. Um, uh, we let the Kashmiris decide, let them speak. And uh, this campaign that they are running uh, with thousands of members, uh, it's very important for uh, uh, to have this uh, neutral uh, kind of uh, view from everyone. Uh, so, Shama, so your question is very important because um, why is the international community silent? And uh, my own view is uh, that first, the international community did not understand what was happening. Because if you go back to 5th of August, in fact, uh, a week before uh, 5th of August in July, the governor of, uh, or even two weeks before, when uh, the BJP fascist government uh, actually suspended the local legislative assembly and uh, put everyone under observation. Uh, they then, uh, the governor then held a press conference, a dramatic press conference in uh, Sirinagar, and they also did one in uh, Delhi, where they said that there's an imminent threat of terrorist attack uh, on the Yatris, the Hindu pilgrims, pilgrims who had gone to Kashmir and they need to come back. I need to remind people because, you know, very rarely you get big states like uh, India or, you know, any state uh, telling lies, clear uh, lies, uh, just to divert the attention from what they were doing. And once they'd said that there was an imminent threat of terrorism, they could send in 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 troops and the world will remain silent. And this is exactly what happened, Shamsab, if you recall. In end of July, they sent in 10,000. Then they said, oh, no, the threat is more. And then they sent in another 20,000. And so 50,000 troops gathered in the valley. Already, there were like 800, 850,000 soldiers in Kashmir. Uh, and these were extra troops to make sure uh, uh, that uh, nobody protests against uh, the abrogation of uh, 370 and also 35A. Uh, so when the international community was under the impression that there was some sort of terrorist threat, and you know how Western world, especially after 9-11 uh, and uh, uh, what happened 7-7, etc., how the Western world is afraid of terrorism and they really don't want to take any risks. Everybody went silent. Nobody questioned why these troops were going in, why the internet, which you mentioned, was uh, suspended, why communications. In fact, 10 to 15,000 
young men were taken out of Kashmir and they were put in jails inside India. And similarly, all the politicians, all the academics, and or, or even the former chief ministers of Indian occupied Kashmir were put behind bars. If that means also those, this uh, Mahbuba Mufti type people who are uh, also uh, uh, coalition partners with BJP, they were put in prison uh, as well. And you know, uh, the rest of the story. So uh, I think that was one issue. The second one, uh, because the world has been too busy with its own problems. Now there are American elections, then uh, you have uh, their own internal fighting, and then Corona came in. And because of Corona, sadly, we've lost 38,000 people, 100,000 in America. The world is just uh, in a complete mess with the coronavirus. Uh, and there's also tension between the superpower and the emerging superpowers as well. Uh, I honestly think that those of us who keep relying on the United Nations resolutions and keep saying that the United Nations will do something, they will not because the UN is too weak. And uh, the only body, I, I, you know, I know that... Uh, uh, my friend and uh, Tarar Saab's friend, uh, Mr. Imran Khan, uh, when he makes a speech, he says that I spoke in the General Assembly. The General Assembly is just a talking shop. Uh, and the Security Council that has power does not want to rock the boat because there are bigger things happening in the background. Uh, because what you see now is uh, this tension, uh, economic uh, uh, sort of uh, struggle between uh, China and uh, the United States. And that's why you see the language changing. Uh, but there also power shift, whether it is in the Middle East, uh, Russia uh, playing part in uh, uh, Syria, which uh, uh, America has just run away, uh, whether it is in the uh, uh, Korean Peninsula, et cetera, et cetera. So there are complications. I, I'm not making excuses for the international community. They should, but they will not. And uh, Britain and uh, France and the European countries have very clearly said that their economic interest is much more important than human rights and historic agreements and in historic promises. So I think we should not rely too much on that. Uh, what we need to do is just, uh, I know I've been on a little longer, but I just want to finish this. Look, uh, we know that the Modi government has been working with Netanyahu. Netanyahu has been advising Indian government uh, on the policy of Kashmir because there are similarities. And so what they are trying to do, similar to what happened in West Bank and also with the Palestinians, is that you uh, show the threat of terrorism, you blow up their houses, you uh, terrorize the whole community. So even if you uh, knock down their houses, you bring in uh, other people to settle. This is with the with the uh, uh, new law, which uh, uh, allows uh, with 35A, abrogation of 35A, uh, those those who served in the Indian Army and Indian Civil Service, that they could uh, get citizenship and also drive out the local communities, terrorize them. Just what you saw last week, uh, which uh, 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 Chaudhry Sajid Tarar Saab and myself, we were discussing in relation to the uh, demolition of 15 houses or more uh, and killing a lot of young people. It is terrorizing them so they can be driven out of the valley, driven out of Indian occupied Kashmir, bring in uh, the Brahmins and uh, okay. the RFs. Yeah, yeah, but what, what, yeah, yeah, obviously a lot is happening there, but what can be done? You have kind of outlined that nobody is going to do anything. It seems like you are saying that nobody can do anything and they can continue with it. Well, they, they are doing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, at the moment, nobody is doing. We need to be preparing. This is the whole reason of your conference is to raise this awareness. And I, that's why I pay tribute to Claire and her colleagues 
for raising the awareness, getting this massive um, support from the masses. Look, when I was a young man and I supported uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, there was a big movement around the world where people, uh, anti-apartheid movement around the world, not only the African countries, but young people in, in colleges, schools, trade union movements, the ordinary people. It's good to see ordinary people, whether they're from Canada, from Britain, or from the rest of the world. We need to okay. get their support to pressurize their, uh, their governments. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, let's ask the same question from uh, Paul Bristow, who is a member of uh, British Parliament, that what, what is British government doing about this to stop this uh, blatant human rights violation happening in the Indian occupied Kashmir? Uh, well, thank you very much for having me on your show. It's a great honor to, to be here. Um, I guess the first thing I would say is uh, let's start with the bad news. I think the bad news is the British government uh, official view is that this is a bilateral issue between Pakistan uh, and Kashmir. And uh, the Labour Party front bench, they've now adopted a very similar view. Um, in fact, the, first, the last election, the Labour Party had a slightly different view on, um, on, on Kashmir. Uh, but one of the first acts of the new Labour Party leader, Keir Starmer, was to go back to that position, that this is a bilateral issue between India and Pakistan. And I'm afraid while this remains, while the rest of the world sees this as a bilateral issue between India and Pakistan, then I, I'm afraid I would agree with the Lord Ahmed that very little is going to happen because uh, there will be no progress. And while that happens, Kashmir bleeds. Kashmir does not have its have their say. Lo lots and lots of people, young people in Kashmir will live, young and old people will live with the lockdown. But let's start with a positive because the last election uh, changed, uh, I think, the viewpoints fundamentally of several of my colleagues. There's been a few of these conferences, a few of these get-togethers, and for the first time we've seen real cross-party uh, alignment on this issue. There are now scores of MPs of all parties, from the Labour Party, Conservative Party, my party, um, and even the Scottish Nationalists Party. They have, uh, a number of MPs from there have been have shown solidarity with uh, the people of Kashmir. So that optimism, that positivity, that this issue is getting more traction in the UK Parliament is something we can be uh, very, very positive with. And, and do you know something? What has actually happened is that the Kashmiri diaspora here in the UK has started to flex their muscles. And that's why so many MPs have become particularly interested in Peterborough. My constituency, for example, has 20,000 Muslims living in Peterborough. Uh, I was always very sympathetic to uh, the poor people of Kashmir, simply because Peterborough is my city and I grew up living next to Kashmiri people. I went to school with Kashmiri people. I, my co-workers were Kashmiris. Uh, so I always understood that this was a very serious issue. And I think that growing realisation that this part of the world is, has been forgotten is, is really gaining traction in the UK Parliament. I also think what's gaining traction in the UK Parliament is that the Brit Britain has a historic role in this and that understanding that Britain as the former colonial power in South Asia has a responsibility to clear up, well, quite frankly, the mess it's, it left behind there in regards to Kashmir. And that, that growing realisation, I think, uh, does give us a moral duty uh, in order to speak out on this issue. Um, just the other thing I, I will say is that I think how we approach this is really important and how we approach the the issue of Kashmir is really important. We can never, there's often a temptation sometimes, I think, by those who are either pro, pro the Indian position or uh, have sympathy with, with the position that I take, uh, is to try and pitch this as a Muslim versus Hindu issue. That, can, that cannot happen. And I think if we do do that, I think that would be a, a, a road to disaster for us. This is, has to be an issue of basic human rights, because what's going on in Kashmir it's, it's not just about um, detention. It's not just about lockdown. This is about murder. And forgive me for, for saying this uh, um, perhaps during the day when anyone can be watching, but this is about murder. This is about rape. And these basic human rights violations, this murder, this rape, cannot stand. So we need to ensure that that is 
broadcast to uh, the people and, and, and that awareness needs, needs to develop. But secondly, I also tweeted today about simple self-determination and the right to democracy. In my country here in the UK, we've had two referendums recently, one on Scottish independence, which they voted no, which I was very pleased about. And we had one where Britain voted to leave the European Union. Of course, I'm very pleased about that too. But we had our say, and if the results had gone the other way, then that, that was a democratic view. So also Britain are in international disputes with Spain over Gibraltar and with the Falkland Islands over Argentina. And the position of the British government is that no decisions on the future of these overseas territories will be made without consulting the people of those territories. So it's very much a tripartite arrangement. So Britain and the people of Gibraltar and the people of Falkland Islands, of Falkland Islands are determined on, on these well, issues. And that's why their self-determination... Sorry, 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 sorry to cut you off, uh, uh, Paul uh, uh, Bristow. Um, is, is there any practical um, uh, actions British government, uh, you, you suggest to British government or the parliament, which they should be, um, you know, uh, basically working for you know what what practical step they should be taking for uh, to well, to put pressure on uh, Indian government that they um, you know then th that they consider all these things which you have said. Well, when I make the case to the foreign secretary, I make it in the terms that I've just made to you. I make it on the terms of this being a self determination, and I'm I'm saying that in one hand we're saying to the Argentinian government and the Spanish government we will not make a decision about the future of those territories without consulting the people of those territories. Why is is Kashmir any different? Why aren't the views of the people of Kashmir and Jammu, occupied Kashmir and Jammu, not given? Um, a, an equal say to those of, 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 of India and, and Pakistan, and that's completely wrong. Now, what will I be doing in the UK Parliament? Well, this is, there is this growing optimism, as I say, that I have, because so many people now are much more aware of the issue because, quite frankly, of the Kashmiri diaspora. But we need to break beyond the views of the Kashmiri diaspora and make sure British government, the British government and politicians from all sides don't just see this as just some you know, little disagreement between India and, and, and Pakistan on the other side of the world. Because after all, these two powers are nuclear powers. Let's not forget that. You know, if there is going to be a, a, a future conflict uh, in the world, and fingers crossed there isn't, the last place it needs to be is on the, on the mountains of Kashmir because of um, the threat to all of us uh, in this world, because it's a nuclear world. So I, um, what I'll be doing is I'll be making these, these points very clear in Parliament, in debates. I'll continue to lobby the Foreign Secretary. But do you know something? I'll also do it with my colleagues from the Labour Party. It can't just be a one-party issue. We'd all have to work together. And the thing I will say to my colleagues, my former parliamentarians, uh, like Lord uh, Ahmed, uh, outlined earlier. We need to take this out broader than just the Kashmiri diaspora and make this a issue of human rights and self-determination. You know, there are other examples around the world where these issues are uh, are highlighted, perhaps disproportionately sometimes, for their, on their impact on the numbers of people that it impacts. But here in Kashmir, there are millions of people who have been displaced. And so I am very willing to uh, in my position as the MP for Peterborough and soon to be the chair of the chair of the Conservative Friends of Kashmir to take this issue further than just the city of Peterborough, further than Parliament and speak to gatherings across uh, the UK to try and generate support for this issue. And do you know something? It can't just sometimes say I'm a English, white English politician, uh, as you can see. And I think sometimes we need more faces like mine talking about this. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Paul Bristow. And the next, uh, let's go to Sajid Tharar because he advises to, uh, you know, advises somebody who is considered to be perhaps the most powerful person um, in the world, or powerful leader um, uh, of our, uh, in the world. Uh, and uh, uh, Mike Pompo's statement said that uh, a strong stand will be uh, taken against countries suspending communications and internet services what what is uh, president trump's administration position on what india is doing india is doing exactly that uh, in uh, indian occupied side of kashmir so wh what is the uh, usa government's position on that this uh, platform i'm i'm highly uh, appreciative i'm uh, highly obliged uh, that you just went there once and you felt the pain. 
And then secondly, uh, Lord Nazir, who I have uh, said earlier, who has played the role of as a, being a mentor to many like myself in our life to, uh, to come to the other countries and uh, play a role in politics. Uh, I'm appreciative of Miss Ker Miss Karen and Miss uh, Michelle from uh, from Canada. I'm appreciative to uh, the uh, the P uh, MP Bristol that you are coming to this platform uh, and talking about it. Uh, but today, very first thing, I wanted to uh, I want Kashmiris to forgive me. I was born raised in a country. I was born raised in Pakistan, where from the day first I have been known that what what is happening in Kashmir. I have failed them. The whole world has failed them. It's a nine months and 15 days. In 21st century, um, gentlemen, I'm talking about 21st century. They are living in, 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 in such a barbarian and such a cruel situations for nine months and 15 days. All of us, we have failed. Each time I drink a glass of water, a clean water, each time I eat the warm meal and I think about them, they are human. I failed them as a human. I failed them as a Muslim. I failed them as a Pakistani. I failed them as an American. I'm embarrassed and I'm asking forgiveness from them. Please forgive me that I failed you. And second thing I wanted to tell you as an American, all, the, all these bodies early, earlier, even then the Lord Nazir has said, United Nations, IMF, the World Bank. I request people to read their history, first of all. They, they they just they go for their own interests. They don't go for the humanitarian uh, issues or something. They have failed. President Trump has said several times they have failed, and we are the only one Americans. Those are financially supporting them, and they are even then failing Americans. So the, depending on their resolutions, it's not going to do anything. We have seen seventy two years they have failed. Today, uh, last time I request I I, I said on that segment. The Kashmiris, they are fighting their own war and they are fighting well. And frankly speaking, today, regardless, Congress is not going to do anything. The, the, you know, the UK parliamentarian, nothing. Because India is so strong financially, they can buy all of this influence. They have been spending billions and billions of dollars in America to buy the American influence on the issue of Kashmir. They have been spending billions and billions of dollars Look at the look at the Howdy Modi. Look at the, the uh, Namaste Donald Trump. Look at the I mean, say so the situation. The sole purpose was so what? So what? So what is uh, the USA government's position on what? What you have advised to Mr. I'm Trump? I'm coming there. Yeah, please. And here at the same time, I am a lawyer. I can write an essay on it, how to twist every single thing. But here at this morning, I won't do that. It's part of my training to twist everything as a lawyer, but I won't do that. I will, I will speak, I'm speaking from my heart. What is happening, I'm a political scientist. All the traditional politicians, they have failed people. Donald Trump is a reaction of that. And before he became a president, he offered arbitration in 2016 to resolve the Kashmir issue. Think about it. He has offered arbitration at least more than 15 times. People always say that doesn't mean nothing, no. When the president of the free world, when the president of the sole superpower on the planet, when he offer arbitration, he bring that issue on the media. He tells people that there is an issue and I'm willing to resolve it. And here, at the same time, you are talking about the Pompeo and the other things, the two, three, four, two or three recent situations. First of all, the, when last time Mr. Jay Shankar was here in the State Department, Right after meeting Mr. Pompeo, he's supposed to meet the congressman, American congressman, and he canceled the meeting because all of them, they were asking him, they, they were planning to ask him questions regarding the humanitarian situation in, in Kashmir. That's very first thing. Second thing is this, two weeks ago, the United Commission on the Freedom of International uh, is, is byproduct of the State Department. They have put Indians list on the uh, countries of concern. So the situation is there, but at the same time, like I told you, the India is a might in that region, financial might in that region. They buy everything. And today, frankly speaking, forget about what the uh, Trump or Pompeo is going to do. The Muslim countries not standing with you. They are calling Modi to their countries and giving them highest possible awards. OIC has invited them. Forget about the rest of them. Even then, the Muslims are not standing on a Kashmir issue. Not a single statement from Saudi Arabia. 
not a single statement from other Muslim countries. Like I told you, we have abandoned, and all of us, we are guilty of it, frankly speaking. People so, are making... So people. again, it's the economic interest over the human rights in a, for, yeah. for Muslim or non-Muslims. Yeah, exactly. And But the thing is this, today we are here, and the only situation, again, like I, I, I wanted to uh, second with Lord Nazir, awareness, awareness, awareness. I have been advocating here, telling all the people, writing their congressmen, what is the situation in Kashmir? What is the 2G? Uh, they are, uh, they are, there's no internet. There's only 2G. There are nine months and 15 days. Tell your legislators to please, for God's sake, on a humanitarian le levels, uh, vote on the based on humanitarian level instead of versus as a Democratic, Republican, Labour Party or Conservative Party. But at the same time, we need to feel the guilt of it. We need to feel the pain of it before we do anything else. And frankly speaking, Claire, I salute you that you went there once and you have come up to, uh, to the idea of this, the putting us together. I have been living under this thing since, uh, I mean, I'm not 72 years old, but this, this nightmare is 72 years old and we are failing. And I'm guilty, frankly speaking. It's a Saturday morning and I'm very guilty about it. I have done many things. I have risen the, vo the voice of it. Last time, the Raja Farooq Hader, who's a, a, a Prime Minister of Azad Kashmir, he was here. I went along with him to Dallas and I spoke there. And I, 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 his family is still living in a, in a, in a Kashmir. And, and I know the pain. Frankly speaking, I always believe in before you do anything, put your feet into, into the shoes of those people. Those are suffering since years. And I tell you one thing. Last time, even then, I said to Lord Nazir, who's very dear to me, who's very respectful, respectful uh, for myself, the reason who will definitely, because of what is going on in 21st century in India, I had a high regards from India. I had a lot of friends from India. I have gone to India many times with the different delegations, with the trade delegations. But what is happening in India in, on, in, in these days, in 21st century, Kashmir's not only Kashmir's freedom. Look at this today. I mean, so India is surrounded by Nepal, by Bangladesh, by China, by Pakistan. And uh, what is what is Modi's getting out of it? You cannot do this, whatever that, that Hitler did about, you know, the 70 some years ago, you cannot do this today. People have internet, everybody has a weapon in, ha in his hand. And what is that weapon is a smartphone. So today you cannot hostage the uh, 12 million people in Kashmir. And I'm telling you, I can see the freedom of Kashmir with my eyes. And I, 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 I told Lord Nazir, my dear friend, that the day is very soon that we will all go to Kashmir at, at the Lal Chowk and we'll celebrate the freedom of their people. Let's hope that that happens soon. And uh, uh, let me bring, uh, let me bring uh, 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 Vakas Akram, uh, who is here uh, uh, in place of uh, Tariq Farooq, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister of uh, uh, Pakistani administered uh, Kashmir. And uh, because Mr. Deputy Prime Minister couldn't make it, so uh, Vakas is here. Uh, to speak on his behalf that what Azad Kashmir government is able to do. Can they do anything about this situation? Or uh, Ikhlaq uh, will speak to Nurdu Ikhlaq ji. Kya karegi Azad Kashmir government? Kya wo kuch karne ke kabal hain? Can I please add one thing to Tarar sahab, what he said? Can you can you wait now after and Ikhlaq, because... please? Uh, Vakas. Oh. Because I, his, his connection is now very strong. <laughs> my mind lose yeah. him. Go on, go on. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Bismillah Rahmani Rahim. Uh, thank you so much, Shamsa, for giving me a time uh, oh. to express my views about Kashmir. And first of all, I, I would like to say thank you to Mr. Paul, Mr. Sadi Tarar, and also Lord Nazir Ahmed and all other respectable guests who are joining us in this show and showing solidarity with oppressed Kashmiri nation. So all your JKTV team is also, uh, we also uh, will let Kashmir decide, all of our team is especially want to thank you to JKTV, the voice of the voiceless. You're really, you're really a voice of the voiceless and we all are really thankful to you. So. Mm, as you know, Mr. Shams, that this Kashmir issue is going on from last 70 years and Kashmiri people are suffering from uh, Indian oppression, brutal human rights violation inside Indian occupied Kash Kashmir. And uh, from this last uh, 70 years, the United Nations and as the, the previous guest just spoke that all big powers, they are just looking with the eyes of yeah, the I mean, interest, uh, economic uh, interest. And 
Vakash, mm-hmm. we have we have we have all uh, I think all people said that and uh, you know what what who is who is not doing what. But can you talk yeah, about so I'm, this I'm, moment? What uh, what they can do or what they are doing or, or what they are able or capable of doing? Yeah, actually, actually, like I can uh, mostly I can speak at the behalf of my campaign. But in reference to the Azad Kashmir government, I mean, um, they are they are trying their best in their like I mean capacity. They are trying to push this Kashmir cause. So, but the thing is, let Kashmir decide. Campaign. Uh, what when we saw when the ordinary people of the Kashmir when we saw then the that these great powers or like you can see the governments of uh, of I mean you can say the superpower or the others. Uh, the, if these governments are not listening or they are just looking uh, and, uh, with the eyes of the economic interest in this geopolitical structure then we the ordinary people we decided the clear he's he is an ordinary t- uh, i mean he's a primary school teacher in scotland and also like me i'm the student of the international relations i'm doing masters in that so we the ordinary people of the world we think that if governments are not doing anything if united nations is like just keeping their eyes closed so we we can make a difference so we decided that we should raise the voice of the kashmiri people okay and we we will like take it to the whole world and we will show the world that what is going on inside the indian occupied kashmir so like but still like we have a hope like in reference to the united nations that uh, uh, one of our guests just spoke that united nations i mean they have a very very you can say the weak role uh, in this i mean current era and they have done nothing on kashmir yet just like they just passed the resolutions and they just closed their eyes so the thing is i mean but we are still hopeful that this world will see the things with the eyes of the humanity not with the eyes of the economic interest because look what whatever is how i mean what is happening there inside uh, indian occupied kashmir the kashmiri uh, people and the indian security forces they are killing little children they are like destroying their homes there are brutal human rights violations and there is a lot going on there and look at the recent domicile act that they bring and this domicile act that the indian government had passed this is the conspiracy to change the demography of a uh, kashmiri um, of jammu and kashmir okay and so the kashmiri people we totally reject this and the, all these things that india has done unilaterally okay and we uh, and we are requesting the world community to stand with us to stand for the um, i mean to st- speak speak up for the human rights and please um speak up for the right of the self determination that united nation promised to the kashmiri people okay so as the mr Yeah. Thank you, Vakas. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much uh, for mm-hmm. your contribution. You. And uh, Vakas, you're welcome. From Azad Kashmir. So I will keep you in lobby just in case if we uh, need you again. If you if you stay connected. And uh, yes, sure. Uh, so, Thank so, you. Lord Lord Ahmed, uh, you were going to add something uh, to what uh, Mr. Sajid Sarar said. Uh, Sajid Sarar Sab is a very experienced uh, political. Uh, activist not only advisor to the uh, president of the united states but uh, uh, also uh, an influ- influential uh, gentleman in washington dc and houston uh, he uh, made very good point uh, in relation to india being surrounded uh, by these different countries but i just wanted to share it with you and remind you i i know you are aware uh, that india is uh, Uh, already has started a a, a war uh, with the china and uh, the chinese uh, troops have uh, entered uh, uh, north of kashmir uh, india has already started uh, a, a struggle with nepal with uh, wanting to redraw the map again and take some parts of uh, nepal india is at war with uh, bangladesh uh, because uh of the citizens uh, amendment act uh, where they want to throw out so many uh people from uh, uh india and also ha- having difficulties and with the, uh, pakistan you know uh, that on daily basis there's occurrence where there are helicopters coming in or drones coming into uh pakistan and also azad kashmir so my point was that just adding on to uh my very good friend uh, sajid tar saab that he is absolutely right to mention india is surrounded by those but india is making enemies of everyone or rather i should not say india i should say 
BJP fascist uh, Hindutva regime because uh, uh, majority, many, many Indians are very good people. But this Hindutva philosophy, the RSS uh, BJP philosophy, is that they only win elections by having wars and persecuting minorities and Kashmiris. And uh, I think uh, some of the things that we were talking about, Tars have said the same and uh, I and others okay. have said the same. Okay. That yeah, we, yeah. Please, we please, please conclude so we uh, engage some uh, people who are left out in this year. Please. Yeah, go on. Oh. Yeah, you can conclude. Okay, my, my conclusion is that uh, that when we are we are taking this uh, uh, campaign to the masses, and uh, the, when you're talking to the masses, not only talk, you talk about Kashmir, but what is happening to minorities, whether they are Dalits, whether they are Christians, they are, are Sikhs and uh, other minorities in India, what they've been doing, lynching them, burning their okay. houses, burning their places of worship, and what is happening in Kashmir? We need, we need to take it. We need to. We need, it has to be inclusive and broader. Yeah, brilliant. And uh, let me bring uh, Karen and Makala from Toronto. They are a representative of uh, Let Kashmir Decide uh, group there. Uh, Makala, how how did you get involved? Uh, you know, both both of you, you know, one after other. How how did you get involved uh, in this campaign? Yeah. Um, well, we're very, uh, very much uh, working for justice uh, for Palestine, uh, holding our own Canadian government accountable. And um, really, um, I mean, the only reason that we would come is that we would come remembering the historic context of Canada, just as uh, as uh, MP Bristol said, that we too are, you know, we're a colonial nation and we've really got our uh, fingers right in the original forming of the, uh, the right for self-determination for the cash people. It was our uh, our representative who was the president at the United Nations Security Council in 1948, Lord Mc or, um, General McNaughton, who uh, was really instrumental in uh, Resolution 47. And so from that perspective, I mean, we too are on settler land. We are settlers here on Indigenous land. And so we come from, from that perspective, both within Palestine and uh, and uh, for Kashmir. We come more recently to the struggles and understanding of the people of Kashmir. And uh, Michaela, who is my daughter, and I, along with several other people, were um, very honored to be able to uh, go on a human rights delegation in uh, December of this year to Azad Jammu Kashmir um, and to see how independent the government is, to see how it's working with its own judiciary, to actually sit in the legislature, to actually meet with the uh, party, different parties as well, um, and to be able to go to the line of control and into uh, several of the uh, what you could call refugee camps, but we will call them camps for displaced people um, because, of course, we would not uh, want to say that they're refugees because they have every right of return. So maybe I'll turn to Michaela just to reference our time there. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we just, uh, we come from the broader Canadian civil society. Of course, we stood with Palestine for a long time. And um, as soon as we learned about Kashmir and the Kashmiri cause and the human rights violations and the the, the breaking of international law, specifically the Fourth Geneva Convention, we just couldn't, you know, you can't support Palestine and not support Kashmir, right? Because they're they're one in the same. They're neo-settler colonial projects, right? Well, Modi and Netanyahu are literally one in the same. So how how is the awareness like where you are uh, about Kashmir? I mean, how people know about it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our role very much uh, from civil society, and we're honored as civil society to be amongst the, the group today here. Um, I mean, our role is really to speak to our government as well as to uh, get the issue out in the broader context. So after August 5th, um, yes, there were people on the street. There were thousands of people on the street here in Canada. Um, and yes, we've written thousands. There were 10,000 letters, which I mean, we're a fairly small country um, that were written to our government uh, just as the federal election was happening. We've got two petitions currently in our government and we are um, working towards and have uh, agreement that there would be a hearing with the human, well, at least to, re to review that there would be a hearing with the human rights uh, subcommittee of the Standing Foreign Affairs Committee. So those are the kinds of things that we're trying to do from uh, 
or holding accountability. But I mean, the real accountability does come down to which nation, which nation would take uh, would take India to the International Criminal Court, and uh, that I mean, I think is the elephant in the room that we're not we're not able to you know speak to because some nation does need to stand up and be able to uh, to do that. Learn from the Palestinian example here in Canada. We created a situation where Venezuela, which uh, you know would not be a country you would be taking to the ICC, was has taken to the ICC in literally what a, about a year's amount of work um, to do that um, as Canada third party playing a key role. So um, not for the reasons we would want, but those are the same kinds of tactics. If we could work with the OIC countries, as you said, the OIC countries, the Arab world stepping up to uh, play on uh, those things. For civil society, I think BDS is the other thing. And it's not just uh, boycotting things from India, it's doing the heavy lifting to be able to do the work to look at the companies that are complicit in war crimes, uh, in the military occupation, in the war crimes, and now in the illegal settlement as the domicile law, law is put to, into practice in hyperdrive, and to be able to put that back within our own legal frameworks uh, in our own countries. In Canada, we have an act that allows for sanctioning of countries that violate human rights. So that takes us beyond- and we use that on countries who, you know, maybe you shouldn't, right? Like there's quite a double standard here in Canada in terms of the Special Economic Measures Act, right? Oh. Like countries like Iran and Syria, which I'm not dismissing the human rights violations, but often countries uh, that are Muslim are scapegoated and, you know, put under economic distress, whereas countries like Israel and India, you would never see them on the list. So to do that heavy lifting as civil society to get those countries, you know, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the yeah. So the awareness is uh, you know step by step, but it's also it does need mass movement, but it also needs uh, being able to work and work within our own legal frameworks, work within our our own, own legis you know, domestic legislation as well as the accountability at an international uh, level. We have a huge campaign we, going on right coming, now with the United we're coming, Nations. We're coming uh, near to the end of the show, so sorry, I have to stop you there. And uh, I give chance to uh, Paul Bristow, uh, Lord Ahmed, and uh, Sajid Sarar uh, to uh, say the, you know, uh, to basically uh, conclude the show. And Claire, I know she's there, but she'll, she'll be here uh, throughout the show, so we can um, bring her in at the end, uh, you know, to, to just you know, conclude it. So, yeah, you're, Paul you're not Bristow, concluding the show, you've concluded the first session. <laughs> yeah. So is there is there uh, Paul is there is there anything on the British Parliament agenda for for the coming uh, days? Uh, I mean, uh, has there anything planned to do about this year, or are you planning to, you know, do something about it inside the Parliament so that the, the pressure continues? Uh, yes, my colleagues and I will be uh, setting up a a backbench business debates, and again, that will be cross party. It won't just be. Conservative MPs, it will be MPs from the Labour Party and from the Scottish Nationalist Party and maybe the Liberal Democrats too, where we can talk about this. I myself personally will be encouraging uh, all sorts of my colleagues to participate in that uh, debate to show solidarity with the people from Kashmir and also their own constituents from the Kashmiri diaspora. But I repeat, I think the biggest weapon we have in our armoury here in the UK is to ask that the people of Kashmir are treated in exactly the same way we would expect anybody else to be treated from this country. We respected our referendums here in this country uh, and we gave our people a say. And we also include uh, the people of our overseas territories in any sort of negotiation about their future. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. What is good for the people of this country is good for the people of Kashmir. That's our biggest weapon in our armoury and that is how I hope I will be persuading along with using the Kashmir diaspora and wider awareness to change attitudes within the government and within other political parties. Thank you. Thank you, Paul Bristow, MP for uh, Peterborough. And uh, uh, Lord Ammon, with your uh, um, House of Lord hat on, um, is any, any anything planned uh, within the House uh, for, for coming days? Uh, 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 I think you are also part of uh, the Kashmir uh, uh, on an all party Kashmir group as well. So any any activities are planned, any any real uh, action? Uh, the all party parliamentary group uh, has been active, but 
because of uh, uh, coronavirus and uh, the uh, situation in Parliament, uh, they've been doing conferences, online conferences, and also consultation uh, with uh, the leader of the uh, Labour Party. Um, I think uh, that once the House resumes, then uh, there will be more uh, activities, but I don't see much change at the moment. Uh, there are lots of uh, online conferences uh, on uh, uh, th this type that you are doing, uh, StreamYard or uh, Zoom or uh, many other platforms. Uh, people in Australia have invited me to a conference uh, uh, next week, there are people from all over. I was speaking with some Russian friends yesterday. Uh, so, you know, this is uh, about taking the message to the masses. Uh, and until we get parliaments and governments back in full form, uh, we have to uh, work uh, in the communities and, and keep the light uh, going. Uh, so we are exposing the fascist Hindutva government, but also uh, gaining support for the Kashmir and also making Thank aware you. to Thank other you. people. Thank you very much, uh, Lord Nazir Ahmed. And uh, now, finally, uh, Sajid Tarar, uh, before I go to Claire, uh, Sajid Tarar, what, what, what action, what practical, practical steps you think, uh, you know, the people in the uh, USA are, particularly the government, people who are part of the government are, uh, you know, the democratic setup. What action you think, uh, you know, people can pressurize them to take or, you know, people can demand or ask them to take? Is it mute? Yeah. I think you, you have muted your mic, uh, Sajid. I got it. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah. I, I, I wanted to say that it, we are much educated. Pakistanis and Kashmiris now, we are much educated. We have been telling our legislators what's going on in Kashmir. I have been, uh, uh, myself, on different fronts, been educating the our, our lawmakers, legislators, what's going on in Kashmir. And second thing I wanted to say, what is in my mind, and I have been, I don't have a time yet, but I wanted to take the 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 government of United Kingdom. I wanted to take them to the International Court of Justice on the basis of division of India and Pakistan and Kashmir. The way that Mr. Radcliffe and his expertise, the way he divided the line in such a haste and such a, a poorly manners. I wanted to take the internet. I wanted to take the government of United Kingdom to International Court of Justice to 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 see what they have done to the region of the division. And I'm going to do it. And second thing I wanted to say. The Kashmir uh, only need awareness and support, moral support of the people. Those are suffering there, and we are doing it. I have I have made a a, a form where uh, and which I continuously di uh, distribute among the general masses. And what the form I, I I would love to send it to you, where all you have to do is just fill up your name, and then write it down your address. Go on Google and find who's your congressman and senator and find out that address and just mail it to them. And in that form, it gives you, it, it, it educates these legislators what is happening in Kashmir, what has been violated in Kashmir, what were those fundamental rights, what is the historical background of Kashmir. I have done that and I have been successfully doing it, which has, has, has done a, a, a huge impact. And not only this, uh, I have requested President uh, during the General Assembly in the United Nations twice because I don't see him on a daily basis. I run into him on a different occasions and I, I have requested, please do something for the people of Kashmir there and, 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 and see their suffering. And, uh, and, okay. and I, I'm going to keep on doing. I'm going to keep on okay. doing. I promise yeah. you that I okay. feel like I'm a Kashmiri and I'm going to stand for them. Okay, that's that's very, uh, you know, passionate uh, sport and uh, hopefully uh, it will make a difference. And uh, Claire, uh, at the end of this first session, what do you have to say? Because I know you are, through, uh, you know, with us throughout the day. So what, what, what you have to say, you know, in presence of these guests because they will be leaving soon. Well, I feel quite emotional actually, to be honest, because this is part of um, 
you know, a, a journey for me to to raise awareness by a solidarity event, which was meant to be on the ground in Azad, but here we are online. And to have such expert, knowledgeable voices from all around the world with plans, you know, total solidarity with Kashmir, plans to raise awareness, which was all we were trying to do, and solutions as well. Um, I very much, like Sajid Tara said, do feel that the great British government left um, Kashmir in the hands of almost like two step parents and haven't gone back to um, solve that. So this is the first time hearing about taking the UK government to the courts of justice, but anything that can free Kashmir, um, raise awareness, raise voice is fantastic. So I'm honoured, thank you um, to Lord Nazir, to uh, Paul Bristow and to Sajid Tara and Karen and Michaela and Rakas for joining us in this first session. I think they've done an amazing job and I'm very grateful. And you, of course, Shams. But thank you. Thank you, Claire. And I like that uh, term, step parents. And un unfortunately, you know, uh, these step parents are bad because they are uh, good at domestic violence. They are involved in domestic violence for the last 72 years. So I think that is a really sad aspect of it. But uh, uh, thank you very much, everybody, um, uh, for uh, um, your time and uh, contribution. And uh, I am sorry again that uh, our start was not very smooth, but uh, I hope it went well and it will um, uh, carry on, uh, you know, smooth uh, in, in next two hours. So thank you very much, everybody, for being here. And let us uh, bring our uh, more guests now. And uh, thank you, Sajid Tarar Saab. Thank you, Lord Nazir Saab. Uh, thank you, Karen and Makala. And Claire is with us in the lobby. You will stay and let me bring the other guests up now. And we have in lobby, um, and thank you very much, Vakas Akram. Uh, sorry, I, I couldn't bring up you, uh, you up to the main screen um, in the later half of the show, but I'm sure that whatever you said is brilliant. And uh, now we have uh, uh, MP Afzal Khan Saab with us from uh, um, his isolation, wherever he is. <laughs> and, uh, I, th I think he's in Manchester. Yes, yes, I did show with him. Uh, yes, and, and, and he's having his tea, yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, we have Sardar Anwar with us from Dubai. And uh, um, we have Asana Martia from USA. And she, she is having her tea. And, uh, of course, we have Claire with us as well. And uh, let's hope that uh, I don't know who else is going to join. But whoever comes in, we will uh, hopefully bring them up. And uh, I... Um, yes. So um, I will, I will uh, without wasting much time, I will start with the... Um, um, Afzal Khan Sahib, and I will start with a, a simple question which I was supposed to ask from all other guests, and I forgot. And that is how how did you become aware of this Let's Quickly Decide campaign of the? Sorry, Shamas, can you ask the question again? Was it cutting out? How 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 did you become aware of Let Kashmir Decide campaign, started by Claire oh, Bidwal? Yes. I think I met uh, Claire at one of the party conferences where she was going around with having a tea idea. <coughs> and at the time, I thought it's a brilliant idea. Very simple, very effective. Everybody can understand it and everybody can associate with it. So well done to you, Claire, uh, taking this <laughs> Thank forward. You. Sadly, sadly, with the cover 19, uh, it's put a little bit of dent into this whole idea. But I think this idea has got a feet, it's going to run and keep up with it. I just want to say thank you to you for this. And thank you again, thank you uh, Yeah, pleasure. Uh, I don't want to speak too much. I've been listening throughout the first whole session as well. So I suppose the first point is thank you for this idea because the technology is important. We are lucky enough to be able to utilize this and how we are becoming globally connected up with this and putting the idea of Kashmir, the dispute of Kashmir and the suffering of the Kashmiri people uh, globally in this context with uh, this technology. But I think at the same time, it sends a very clear message about the Kashmiri themselves, 
who for now almost 300 days have been in isolation, they don't have this luxury of this technology that we are using. Uh, or throughout the maximum time, it's been no internet. And then whenever there has been internet, it has fundamentally been just the 2G. So you know that you can't do much. So there's a whole huge consequences of it, what, what is happening. On top of that, I suppose, is the cover 19 and how that is having an impact and how people are actually suffering through this. So the economic aspect linked with the cover 19. So there's a whole health issue as well. I mean, it's an area where I have picked up a number of questions in the parliament to see what is it the British government can do to help? We know in the Pakistan Azad Kashmir side of things, you know, there is some help going on, but actually in the occupied side of India, that is not going on. And there is a huge need on the medical side as well. So there's a huge economic uh, impact that has been felt by the Kashmiris there. On top of that, you've got this whole uh, cover 19 impact as well. I mean, only yesterday I was speaking to some of the students uh, how they were being even discriminated. In a sense, you can see how we're, we are losing a whole generation uh, of our young people, their future, as a result of what is going on. But those students who are from Kashmiri origin who have been abroad, again, how they have been sort of left behind, how they've been discriminated. So people are abandoned all over the world where they're struggling to get back. Even their families are struggling to provide any financial help to them as well. So there's a whole discrimination area uh, towards the student side, which I think should worry us all. And then uh, just very quickly on the UN itself, Look, many of the speakers have already talked about the limitation of the UN and what they should be doing. The Secretary General himself has spoken about the fury and the folly of the war <clears throat> itself. And yet we see daily violation of the line of control. And yet the UN is silent. Some of the permanent members who have responsibility, they too remain silent. And I think these are the things which are not really acceptable uh, if we want to see peace. Um, so these violations need to stop. And we don't want to be in a position where I feel we are heading now in Kashmir. And that is what has happened with the Palestinian people. So their land is being stolen. They themselves are being made homeless. All these demographic changes which is being planned, which again, I think uh, the world shouldn't remain silent. They need to be picked this up. And I, I feel personally at the heart of all this is this... Uh, uh, the rise of right-wing narrative that is taking place. And I often use the term axis of extremism with the leadership. Uh, you find this in a number of countries, and I think certainly the current BJP government in India certainly fits into that. Uh, and I find this very painful because I think India has a long history of pluralism. India has a long history of richness and diversity. Uh, and to celebrate these things. But sadly, in the last uh, many few years, you could argue that this current BJP government actually is taking India in a new direction, which has never been in history like that. And, and that you can see both in India itself, what is happening with such a large number of uh, Muslims and other minorities. And then equally, you can see what they're doing in Kashmir, such a large concentration of military and how that military are violating the human rights of individuals, civilians, of women, young children, all, all that. And then on top of that, I think Lord Ahmed touched on this point. So if you look at the whole spectrum of different countries, which are neighbors to India, instead of having this good neighborly relationship, what you're getting is problems. Uh, so I think Lord Nazir Ahmed went through almost every country idea that I think there is this serious point we need to understand. And all this actually links us to this Hinditwa ideology which exists in the current government of India, which I think is doing a great disservice to India itself, India's image, and the India's own solidarity in the community within their own country. And equally, as we all understand the importance of having good neighbors, so in the resulting in India actually being withheld. So I think there are a real issue. This is a week where we need to be bringing more awareness of human rights uh, for the Kashmiri people. And I think doing things like this actually does help us. So I want you to you know, keep up this Great. good work. In the Thank parliament you. perspective, I'll just say, can I just say one word on the parliament? Because the, the, the yeah, question please. you asked yeah. earlier session. Yeah. Uh, and I think that is this, that uh, what you have in the parliament is a very strong APPG on Kashmir. 
which is from cross party from people from all different parties joining in so that strength i think i see myself increasing which i think is a positive point the second is the debate point and the parliament itself has allocated time for a debate on uh, kashmir is issue particularly with debi ibram the what impact she suffered from going to india and how she was deported back so that time has been allocated it's only due to covid 19 that this debate was pulled so soon as now we going back hopefully this will be lined up so it will give us an opportunity to really highlight what exactly is taking place on ground for the suffering of the 70 plus years of kashmiris Once again, thank you very much because okay. I've been on this line for over an hour. I'll have to leave you. Yeah, uh, that's keep fine. Keep up the good work. Brilliant. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Abdul Khan MP for Manchester Gorton, and uh, I welcome uh, uh, Fahim Kiani and um, Rehana uh, to the show, and Sardar Anwar, of, of course, and Asana Marthi. Asana Way Maritia. Asana Way Maritia. and uh, welcome uh, maritia and uh, can can you tell us how you became aware of this uh, let kashmir decide campaign and uh, you know what is your role and uh, wh- what you do as uh, as your work and you know your involvement how how is linked with this oh well i i found out about the campaign because i was invited to it by a young kashmiri facebook friend of mine who um i friended over a year ago and he friended me on the basis of a reply where i had where i was basically tapped in by another kashmiri facebook friend to respond to some comments on a post and so he friended me based on that it's like oh wow you know she she seems to have a reasonable point of view and he later invited me into the campaign now this the original the first facebook friend who had tapped me into that um he he and i had been he and i have been friends for 2 years and shortly after we became friends he had called me up on a messenger call and had had told me that i was one of the few people who was sympathetic to the situation in kashmir and he had drawn comparisons between kashmir and palestine and he pleaded with me to be to assert what is happening there and to keep that in the minds of people from outside the region because he was very frustrated at how little coverage it received and so i agreed with so i agreed to do that and i've been doing that for at least the past 2 years okay uh, okay i'll come back to you uh, about uh, you know what you think of the situation and what you doing uh, where you are uh to raise the awareness uh, and uh, let me uh, uh, bring uh, uh, raja fahim kiani saab um and his phone is mic is uh, seems like uh, is uh, um yeah you you have muted your mic yes yeah, yeah, so i can i can hear you but i just got the tea is fine now is fine now. <laughs> See, that's brilliant. <laughs> and uh, um, Fahim, how how did you uh, become part of this campaign? And what, what, you know, what you think? How what is the way forward? And what what uh, what you know? It, uh, where 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 should be heading to? Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Shamus Rehman. You've been in this struggle for last uh, I can't say twenty, thirty, forty years. Been long, and you wrote uh, lots of articles on this issue as well. Um, I met with the Claire. Uh, on indian republic day we were holding a demonstration outside indian high commission she came and she explained to me about her com- uh, campaign let kashmir decide i said uh, i fully support this campaign and we held another program in dudley and uh, she was invited as a guest speaker since then uh, i'm involved uh, in, in this campaign let kashmir decide uh, and uh, she had I mean, she made a lot of arrangement to, to hold uh, this event uh, like in muzaffarabad in every country but uh, due to covid 19 uh because everything was uh, has been postponed 
and now we are doing a Zoom meeting at the moment. So as far as uh, the Kashmir uh, issue is concerned, uh, you know that there are two countries in the world. Okay. Is a I'll come. I'll come back to you for that. Let me uh, engage uh, Sardar Anwar Sahib now, and then Rehana, and then we will, you know, uh, obviously discuss a bit further the issue. सरदार अनुभव साहब आप कैसे इसमें इंगेज हुए इन्वॉल्व हुए आपको कैसे पता चला इस कंपेन का थैंक यू वेरी मच शम्मा साहब क्लेरी वाज ऑन विजिट टू पाकिस्तान एंड वी मेट इन इस्लाम बाद एंड वी हैव अ लॉट ऑफ डिस्कशन रिगार्डिंग द ह्यूमन राइट्स वायलेशन इन कश्मीर एंड वी हैव आल्सो डिस्कस्ड द हिस्टोरिकल background of jammu kashmir state and uh, uh, on this tea, uh, campaign uh, we have a lot of discussion with uh, uh, her and uh, it's uh, uh, goes credit to clary and uh, uh, she has done a great job and uh, we are connected with uh, uh, all friends uh, uh, also karen in canada she also supported over uh, kashmir issue uh, and uh, the self uh, determination of jammu kashmir uh, people of jammu kashmir state thank you Thank you very much, Sudar Anwar Sahib and Rihanna. How uh, how how did you become uh, part of the campaign? Uh, first of all, I would like to say assalamualaikum, and I would like to uh, thank you and Claire for giving me the opportunity to actually be a part of this program. Uh, what it is that I met Claire on Women's Day uh, this year in March, and and I saw her like um, outside the um, at Ten Dyni Street. and i could see that she was very passionate and i got talking to her and then i found out about the campaign and she gave me some further details and i kept in touch with her and we became friends and then i became a part of this campaign and i can see all the struggles and the team members they all actually tr uh, tr trying to do their best to actually highlight the issue to the world because we have still many people in this world who don't know about this uh, kashmir matter so today we are actually holding this event so people who really don't know people who don't speak our language they can understand like what happening in kashmir and they can come forward and help us brilliant yeah thank, thank you. you thank you uh, very much everybody for uh, um, your contribution so far and now let's let's go to asana uh, i i am really sorry that i i i am struggling okay let me pronounce. let me make something clear that asenaway maritia are my middle names and if it's easier you can call me by my first name of laura laura that is that is easier for me <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Laura. So, Laura, what, where, where exactly are you based, and what, what you have done so far um, in relation to raising awareness about uh, Kashmir situation? Well, I was, <clears throat> I was born and raised in Seattle, Washington State, and um, so I, I live just south of Seattle now. Right now, I'm in the D.C. area for a few days, and um, what I have. What I have been doing to raise awareness is I've been spending a lot of time on social media, practically like it's my job, and I have the time to do that uh, because I'm a military retiree. And I understand that there have been people who find my military background a bit puzzling as to why I should care about this. Um, but um, my my oath of my commission oath and my mm -hmm. enlistment oath were very had a very limited scope on defending the constitution and i and that includes the the international agreements that we're bound to like the geneva conventions and India has committed egregious violations of common article 3 of the 4th Geneva Convention and common article 3 refers to conflicts not of an international nature and i had been bringing that up on twitter quite a bit and also that is a premise that under un security council resolution 47 those conditions have to be modified to account for that because under the provisions of that resolution it would require that india assume control of all of kashmir and that pakistan unilaterally withdraw and under the circumstances of the war crimes being committed and india's recent posturing regarding wanting to take back gilgit baltistan and azad kashmir I find I would find that unacceptable. I don't think India would be acting in good faith if Pakistan were to literally withdraw and that's why I've been banging the drum 
for months, even before joining the campaign, that that there has to be UN peacekeepers replacing Indian forces before Pakistani forces could withdraw or before Chinese forces could withdraw. <clears throat> um, so, so that was an important thing. And also in a lot of the surveillance of social media platforms, I find certain patterns of people who support occupation that I've also been spending a lot of time arguing against and, and trying to refute. <coughs> and to that end, a few of our group members have been very good researchers to find some of the, to find sources that have refuted the Indian narrative that in favor of occupation, like in, in regards to the Pandit, the Pandit exodus and also to a few other issues, you know, especially concerning the timeline of the, the Patan in, invasion and, and the timeline of accession and, and who had control of what territory. No, obviously, they are, yes, they, obviously history is all, all, always contested and there are so many different views. Uh, and yeah, that is one of the challenges for people who are working uh, to raise awareness about Kashmir. And uh, um, so um, le let's go to Rihanna. Rihanna, how much did you know about uh, Kashmir before you joined the campaign? Um, I actually knew a lot of uh, a lot by uh, about Kashmir because, like, uh, we actually are like Pakistani and Kashmiris here, so so we actually know it from a long time. Uh, Personally, like uh, I'm a law graduate and I'm looking forward to actually becoming a human rights lawyer. And on the other hand side, like I have been going to every protest for Kashmir and Palestine. And um, I actually have been with some other like uh, campaigns as well. So I did actually have an idea like uh, what has been going on. And this is how I met uh, Claire as well. So in this campaign, my role is uh, actually as a, a legion officer. So I'm actually there like uh, trying to uh, engage all Kashmiris and Pakistanis and people who actually really care for, uh, uh, for like Kashmir. And I'm uh, like trying my, my best that uh, even English people around us, like they can find out about this issue and I can get some further help um what i know is that like what happening in india at the moment is really wrong uh because as everybody knows and i don't want to like uh, repeat myself that from 72 years we actually know what has been going on the, the concerning bit is that at the moment uh with, with the uh domicile law that's the main thing that i think we should be actually talking and worrying about because if it's going to be implied then you actually know that there's going to be no kashmir in the future so i think that we should be more like uh working working towards it because whatever has happened yeah, but, has the, happened. But, but the world governments are saying that is the internal issue of india the, whatever constitutional changes they make even labor party and you know the tory party and all these they are saying <laughs> that and uh I, I, I'm, I'm sure uh, Laura will know that is, you know that is that is literally the policy of uh, USA government as well. So um, I'm not I'm not so sure about that. That these are um, internal issues. Well, no, they're it, not internal. Yeah. Let's let's finish it, Rihanna there, first, and then I'll come back to you, uh, Rihanna. Uh, the world can say whatever they want to say. Everybody knows the reality, and 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 we all go by United Nations. We don't go by any country. If the United Nations has actually like said they uh, like uh, in the documentation, so that means that it's not actually a part of India or Pakistan. It is the international matter. And if they are going to keep quiet, and something happens, like if if a nuclear war breaks out. Who is going to take responsibility? And at the moment, we, we can see that China is actually in occupied, um, uh, like Indian Kashmir as well, which is a big threat to actually South Asia and to the world. So I think we all need to unite. And if we all don't unite now, things are going to go out of hand and there is going to be a nuclear war. And before that, there's going to be many other things happening. And I would like to also say that at the moment, India's position is not very, very, very good in South Asia. None of the neighbors like India, none of the neighbors actually want to stand by it. It is having a problem with each and every country. So India needs to be stopped. And if we don't stop India, it's going to continue because India is trying to take over Nepal. It's having a problem with Bangladesh. It's having a problem with Pakistan and even with China. And being, being actually one of the permanent um, 
uh, uh, members of the United Nations. I think China and England actually can, can uh, UK can play a vital role and they can get this uh, issue sorted out. And I would like to add on that this whole issue has, uh, this whole dispute has started because of Britain. So Britain has a huge responsibility. It doesn't matter whichever party is going to solve it, but it's the, it's the duty of the government or every citizen in UK to come forward for Kashmir, come for, forward for the peace of the world, because if they are not going to put the act together now, there they could be a nuclear war breaking out soon. Thank you. Thank you, Rihanna. And uh, uh, Laura, you were going to say something um, about the US policy. Um, well, I don't, I haven't heard anything regarding whether or not we considered a bilateral issue between India and Pakistan. But one of the things that I have found appalling is um, some of the some of the rhetoric that's been adopted that seems very anti-Pakistani. For example, in a so-called pro-Kashmiri resolution af that was done after August 5th, there was a lot of verbiage in it. It's House Resolution 745, and it was sponsored by Pramila Jayapal, who's a rep representative in an adjacent congressional district to mine. But a lot of the rhetoric seemed to be uh, very similar to the stuff out of the Zionist playbook, like in the whereas clauses, references to a special relationship between India and the US. And the only context in which I have ever seen the term special relationship has been when the US refers to Israel. And and that was that was the first red flag. Oh, they, 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 they refer to British as well. We have special relationship, isn't it? Well, and, and then another red flag was this kind of dog whistle dis to Pakistan, say, referring to threat from external forces but there is nothing in Pakistan's weapons inventory that would be a big enough gun to hold to India's head to compel India to violate the Geneva yeah. Convention. That of is course. not they, informed they, by anything. They always Pakistan blame does. Ev everything. Everything they, they, yes, they, they yes. blame and, Pakistan because that sells. And because then that another. Sells. And then that brings me to the third red flag: is is the phrasing of. India having a right to self-defense. Well, there is no India to self-defend in Kashmir unless you are referring to the Indian people seeking, seeking domicile. And again, that's a, and that would be considered a violation of Article 49 of the Fourth Geneva Convention, which is the same article that also makes the Israeli settlements in the West Bank illegal, okay. is the transfer of a civilian population to an area under military occupation. Okay, let me let me bring uh, Sada Anwar Saab in now. Sada Saab, what is your uh, reading of the situation which is uh, existing now in the Indian occupied side of Kashmir? Because this. This uh, program is mainly about that because, uh, you know, the Let Kashmir Decide Solidarity uh, Party is, is, was born in reaction to what India did in the Kashmir Valley. So obviously the focus, the core focus is on that side. So how, how do you see that? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, uh, we should uh, read the mindset of the Modi. Modi is the product of RSS uh, who killed uh, Mahatma Gandhi. They ha are, were involved in massacre in Gujarat. In this way, Modi is a fascist mindset. And second thing, now Kashmir is the biggest jail in the world since approximately ninth month. Since ninth month, and now. You, uh, you see that all uh, world community is became a silent spectator uh, on Kashmir issue, on the genocide of Kashmir, uh, Kashmir because of their economic interest, because they think that India is a big economy for, uh, for them. And before weapons are manufactured to fight wars, no wars are manufactured to sell weapons. That is why India is a big market for the weapons manufacturing countries and other economic uh, and other world community uh, which have their economic interest with the India. And now, uh, uh, now you and all the world community knows that Kashmiris human rights being are violated there. Uh, houses are burnt, business are stopped, schools and universities are stopped. And if uh, through uh, COVID-19, if the world is suffering on uh, could not face uh, the lockdown of one month or two months, then Kashmiri people are facing the lockdown since more than ninth month. 
this is a human tragedy and i think uh, uh, this is uh, this is the time that uh, jammu kashmir state uh, uh, jammu kashmir dispute is not a bilateral dispute or a territorial dispute between india and pakistan is it is a matter of kashmiri nation second thing which i want to tell that jammu kashmir uh, state is geopolitically very important because it's among three nuclear power china mm -hmm. india uh, pakistan and if uh, i include the uh, region of the central asia then jammu kashmir state is a nucleus of half of the world population in this way i think uh, the freedom of uh, millions of uh, indian pakistani and chinese people uh, is always uh, connected with the freedom of kashmiri people and if kashmiri people will get freedom then indian pakistani and chinese people will can get freedom from hunger poverty starvation and terrorism in this way i think this is our not a only national issue it's also a regional issue it's also a international issue because uh, uh, it's also uh, have a strong interest of uh, international uh, um, uh, power uh, usa have their own interest in kashmir issue and russia has their own interest out of the seven nuclear power five nuclear power have directly or indirectly interest with the kashmir issue uh, geopolitically uh, uh, it's very important region in this way i i think that it's a need of our that we should convince the world population world people world journalist human right activist and uh, uh, make this issue as a human issue thank that you. human beings thank are being uh, suffering uh, since last many years thank you sadar anwar saab from dubai and uh... Sadar Anwar is a very senior leader of Jammu Kashmir Liberation Front in the Pakistani administrative side. And now I bring uh, Raja Fahim Kiani, who is uh, uh, leading a campaigner in Britain for many years uh, against the Indian occupation and atrocities. Uh, gee, uh, Raja Fahim <coughs> Kiani, sir, I'm not sure uh, which organization you are part of, so that's why I'm not mentioning organization. But you can tell us yourself uh, mm -hmm. how, how you how you see the situation, uh, Fahim. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, when we are discussing about uh, Kashmir issue, so we can't neglect Hindutva ideology in this current scenario, as uh, Sardar Sab mentioned. Uh, now, Godse has become a hero of uh, uh, Modi regime. Now they're praising openly Godse, who is a killer of Mahatma Gandhi and the uh, Mahatma Gandhi who believed in non-violent movement uh, when uh, during the. Uh, uh, Britain colonial rule. So at the moment, I say we this uh, the Hindu ideology is not a threat for Kashmir, is threat for Pakistan and the whole South Asia region. And Narendra Modi has adopted the fascist policies, and uh, Kashmir has been under siege since uh, 5th August 2019. And Narendra Modi has adopted the policy of dark ages, when dark ages when kings used to put cities under siege by cutting off their supplies for to make them go down and same like Narendra Modi wants the people of uh, Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir uh, <coughs> go down in front of his fascist ideology and uh, give uh, go down his fascist ideology and his terms and tradition and give them uh, give up their demand to right of self-determination but in this all scenario uh, the people of Kashmir have proven that uh, they will never pro compromise on their basic and fundamental right, right to self-determination. And you can see that how the indigenous uh, uprising uh, getting day by day uh, popular within our youth and, and the youth. And uh, in, uh, recently we've seen uh, uh, Indian army have killed uh, uh, dozens of freedom seekers uh, in fake encounters and they have they didn't hand over their bodies to their relatives and they buried them in uh, unmarked graves and uh, there was a report there was a uh, they had a, uh, a graveyard in a gulmarg very uh, in gulmarg and the locals they have opposed uh, when the indian army digging the graves on that area the locals uh, went to the indian army say who they are and they didn't mention who who these people are so at the moment uh, 15,000 plus people have been arrested under the black laws and the black laws uh, armed forces special power act has been challenged in European Parliament it has been mentioned uh, twice in the uh, United Nations Human Rights uh, Commission uh, reports as well so in this situation uh, I think this is the right time uh, to expose the brutal face of uh, the largest democracy of uh, so-called largest democracy India. So this campaign is, uh, I think, so the let Kashmir decide is the right, is timely campaign, 
and uh, we, the people of Kashmir are the core party of this dispute. Uh, I can say the Pakistan is the is the one of the core party as well uh, because when we when we see the two countries when they go to international uh, uh, when when, they, when go to the international power corridors when they take this issue to international power corridors one is Pakistan and one is India. When, Pakistan, when India goes to international power corridors, the international forum, they say there is no Kashmir dispute and this Kashmir dispute must be resolved. On the other hand, Pakistan said there is a Kashmir dispute and this issue must be resolved. And you have seen the stated policy of current government, uh, Imran Khan. When a journalist asked a question to Imran Khan in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in America when he was on the visit, and he said, uh, "What do you what do you uh, think the future of Kashmir?" And he said, "Who am I?" He said, "Who am I to decide the future of Kashmir? The future of Kashmir uh, is going to be decided by the people of uh, Jammu and Kashmir." So this is the stated policy of uh, Pakistan. <coughs> and uh, I'm now, uh, one of uh, Laura mentioned about uh, India threatened to attack on Gilgit Baltistan and uh, Azad Jammu and Kashmir. So uh, we now realize the importance of Pakistani army. They are defending our liberated part of uh, Jammu and Kashmir. So, so I would urge uh, uh, Pakistani government, uh, you have to play a decisive role because uh, the way you've been dealing with Kashmir policy, uh, which was uh, very disappointing for the people of Kashmir, uh, the, the Kashmir issue was an international issue and your rule made this is a bilateral issue going into the Shimla card. And after Shimla card, Indira Gandhi said, he threw uh, the resolution of uh, UN uh, on Kashmir in dustbin. So once again, the uh, once again the people of Kashmir opened the uh, lid of the dustbin uh, where which, uh, which which dustbin was mentioned by the Indira Gandhi through the popular uprising in 1990s. And the first lockdown was imposed in 1990s, and second lockdown. Uh, was imposed on 5th August. In both lockdowns, the people of Kashmir showed their de determination. Uh, they will never compromise on their basic uh, birthright, right to self determination. They will fight against illegal Indian occupation uh, till last uh, blood of uh, blood. Okay. Okay, that is uh, uh, Mr. Fahim Kiani uh, who um, uh, was just speaking. And uh, let's just uh, see. Um, Okay. Um, okay. Um, I was going to uh, call Claire, but I think she's busy. So, um, uh, Laura, I want, uh, uh, I want to comment. Uh, I forgot. Your Claire team is very effective. Rihanna is doing very good work. Rokas and uh, another as well. But I don't know many people. Great. But they are doing a very great work. So. Of course. Yes. She's got a very good team, Claire. Great. And uh, Laura. Um, I mean, what you see as a way forward, like practically for the campaign, and if you have views in general about, uh, you know, people, you know, how, how they should be making their campaigns more effective? Well, I, th I think a lot of um, what's been helpful is being able to gather information to refute <clears throat> the Indian narrative, which they're citing to justify occupation. And one of one of the thing one of the most stark outlines of that narrative was when former U.S. presidential candidate Tulsi Gabbard was directly asked what she thought about the abrogation of Articles 370 and 35A, and she pretty much chapter and verse cited BJP talking points that oh well it's better for women's rights and it's better for LGBT rights that they're all rolled up under India's constitution now because you know we because women in kashmir weren't allowed to inherit property well actually that's really not true um it, i mean she was, she was bringing up stuff like that and one of the, the things that and it's also out of the the zionist playbook of this neo it's a neo colonialist idea that in order to be granted self determination you have to be a model victim of colonialism and when the U.S. gained its independence after we had a revolution to break off from British control when we were under British occupation and we had established a separatist military force, I mean, that's really what it, is, what, what it was. 
Um, but nobody, nobody demanded that we meet these kind of standards back in 1776 when we declared independence. And none of the countries in Europe and none of the countries making this claim, and it's the same claim that goes against Palestinians, like, oh, well, it's better that Israel control that area because of LGBT protections or religious minority protections. When in fact, when these countries were established, Europe, when countries in Europe were established, when the United States of America declared independence, we did not meet this standard that we would be imposing on these on on these on these emerging countries. So I, I think it's it's very it like I said, it it it's a it's a very supremacist kind of argument and it's and it's one and it's one that I would <coughs> use to refute and, and I've used that those kinds of refutations on social media myself and 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 I've and I've been and for these pains I have been called a jihadi. I have been called Pakistani and, and uh, someone who recites Pakistani talking points. I, I find that a, a bit ironic since I am a retired U.S. Army warrant officer. Um, so and, and then also this idea of casting any separatist movement by Muslims as Islamist as though as though it were solely re as though self determination was was something i mean is is there's no particular religious doctrine attached to the idea of being able to govern oneself or determine somebody else's future and i i also think in re that's also in in relation to framing the issue with the Uyghurs in china is that as a separatist movement, China's China has basically co-opted the Western way of framing it and dismissing the movement as Islamist, and okay, then they make yeah. attack and they make attacks on on the on the Islamic religion, and and so then the U.S. comes back and says, oh, and and also Europe says, oh, well, this is a religiously motivated att attack against the Uyghur population. And I, I would say to China, it's like, well, why are you co-opting Western framing? Because that has been how the West has dismissed, has been able to dismiss these things as secular governments, is by framing these movements by Muslims as based on this inscrutable religious doctrine. And that's just really not the case. And, and that's one thing that needs to be, that needs to be confronted in, in that issue. Is is that the is that this the separatist movement isn't an extremist kind of movement? It should not have those connotations. And then when I had looked on the State Department's list of terrorist groups, the 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 U.S. statutory definition of of terrorism specifies that civilian non-combatants have to be targeted. And one of the things that I found appalling was referring to the attack in Pulwama on February 14th of last year as a terrorist attack when it was really an insurgent attack. And as far as rhetoric goes, I didn't find that very constructive. And on Tulsi Gabbard's own campaign website, she had actually had a petition condemning Pakistan for supporting terrorism when it when again the 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 targets were armed combatants so it, it didn't even meet the statutory definition and part of the problem with getting outside support why you for think the why kind you of think movement. is the case why 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 you think that is the case that in uh, america you know these kind of uh, uh, definitions and labels are given to kashmiri activists um i th i think it's part uh, quite frankly i think it's it's a, it's an unfortunate artifact of framing any kind of grievances from for, former colonial possessions that are predominantly Muslim to framing those grievances as doctrinally based as a way like, oh, well, we're secular powers. So because this is a religiously informed grievance, we're just going to ignore it because we can't relate to it and 
and I think that that's been very disingenuous and it's not a policy I personally support. I oppose, I oppose what I call gumbo mercantilism where the, and where the military is, uh, has been used like it has with Britain in the past as an arm of corp of private corporate resource procurement. And that that's been in a, a complaint by a US, a U.S. military service member, Smedley Butler, in his in his book *War Is a Racket*, that as military service member, it's an insult to my service to be used for anything but defense, to be used as an arm of corporate resource co procurement, and and it was really blatant during the British Raj, where the British East India Company actually administered parts of India. And okay. it's, it's something that I personally oppose, and, and that's something that I would like to, as a political progressive, bring forward, too, as, as part of that whole framework of this is not the kind of world that should exist. Definitely. And let's see uh, uh, what Claire has to say now, because uh, um, uh, we have about three, four minutes left yet uh, to, to this show. And uh, thank you very much, everybody, for your contributions. Claire, um, last word from you for this session. And your mic is mute. You you did it. Uh, your, it says your mic is not connected. Can, can you hear me, Claire? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Um, yes, grateful fine, thanks perfect again. now. Thank you. Go on. Okay, grateful thanks again and very honoured for all the people that are here, all the expertise and all the knowledge. And I mean, for me, to let Kashmir decide is the way forward. We've got to find our way through to get in the referendum um, for Kashmir, I think. And all of us working together and uniting all the knowledge and the skills that we have, I think could be key, could really be key. So thank you. Thank you to everybody. Okay, anybody uh, else that's burning something burning yes, today uh, before we end yeah. it? Yes, uh, I, I, want to, uh, I want to add something uh, that uh, now, now present, in present situation, uh, Yasin Malak, uh, chairman, Jammu Kashmir Liberation, who is the sentiment of uh, representative of Kashmir movement, his life is under threat and he's in uh, a Tahar jail. And I think uh, on this occasion, I would like to... Uh, um, uh, ask uh, world community that it's a uh, 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 need of all that <coughs> Amnesty International should take uh, take step and uh, uh, try to release him and uh, give him the opportunity for the uh, 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 his detroiting health. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sardar Anwar Shab from uh, Shams, may I, may I say and something? I hope uh, that may you have uh, you have a branch and, of. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and I hope you have a branch of uh, Let Kashmir Decide in Dubai as well or in Middle East. But uh, who who wants yes. to say something? May Thank I you, say something who, on the who back wants of to say what something? Sardar has just said? Oh, of course. It's Claire. Yeah. Can I say yes, something? Please. Yeah, I just wanted to back up what Sardar Anwar said. I mean, again, with COVID-19 uh, around um, Yasin Malik, the, the threat to his life is real. And I think once we have come past our campaign for the T Solidarity event, I think we do want an international campaign to free Yasin Malik. So I'm grateful for Sardar Anwar to bring that up. And that's something we're going to be Thank looking you. into uh, seriously. Thank you. Well, and that, Thank that you provision much. was included <laughs> in our petition, Claire. Uh -huh. About Absol free, free political prisoners like that. Free prisoners. Absolutely. We should mention, we should mention Asian Rabbi. Asian Rabbi, she's been uh, hard jail. Her husband, Dr. Obviously, Prabhu, there are thousands of people. But thousands. Some are, and uh, Shabir Shah is as well, who spent 25 years now is again. Uh, yeah. So we need to make a more uh, wider campaign. And obviously, Jaisi Mark is a, a leader as well. So yeah. all of this, you know, uh, I need to comment on uh, Laura. Laura highlighted very important point uh, about uh, what kind of false uh, you know, narrative uh, India is presenting at international level after getting Article 370 and 35A. They say whatever the laws they have introduced uh, in India, they can't extend to Indian occupied Jammu Kashmir like uh, they make it more attractive when they discuss issue LGTB. Uh, so LGTB, so the, when they discuss, oh, we, because of uh, 370, we can't extend these kind of Indian yeah. laws. But we are trying to say 
India shouldn't discuss the sub notes. Uh, they we are discussing the headings, while uh, the, through the 370 uh, because they have a special uh, relation with India. Even we don't accept such kind of a session as well because this we consider this is a fake document, and uh, this is whole region is a disputed region, and this uh, whole region uh, this uh, future should be decided according to the uh, United Nations resolutions. In this sense. Uh, uh, when he abrogated the Article 317.35a, this is an open contravention to the UN Resolution 122, 1, 121, 122, and 126, and which prohibit uh, uh, India to take any unilateral action to change the disputed nature of Jammu and Kashmir. So India is trying to deceive the uh, international community uh, to bring such kind of sub notes when he discussed. Uh, the application of article same oh, course, all these are, the same all the all the all these are the companion of, I want to implement uh, Canadian rules on America. So it, it doesn't mean whatever the Canadian uh, you know pass their rules for their country, that's for, for them. Whatever the America pass their rules, uh, lower, lower, lower rules they, for them for them. So we consider India has got no right to extend their laws in Indian occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Yeah, of course, of course, no, no power. None yeah. of the three uh, controllers have that right, but they are, they are. Can I, uh, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I add one thing? Uh, yes. uh, I, I think we, we are, we run out of time now, but <laughs> if, it's, if it's too quickly, if it's not respond to anybody or just you want to make some important oh. point, go on. Uh, I, I want to uh, uh, tell that, uh, both India and Pakistan have occupied the Jammu and Kashmir state and the different laws in Gilgit, Pakistan and different laws in Muzaffarabad and uh, India have different laws yeah. in Jammu and different laws in Ladakh. And this is yes, also a yes. complex, uh, they make a complex issue. In this uh, we, uh, appeal that they put pressure on both India and Pakistan to withdraw their yeah. armies. And let the yes, Kashmiri yes, people to decide. Their and like I said, I like I said Anna, what I'm commenting to the Pakistan Prime Minister, ex-Prime Minister has stated in his speech they are ready to uh, demilitarize simultaneously. Mian Awashrif, this is the policy of Pakistan. But India yeah, is yeah, the right yeah, I think, I think they need to, to put pressure on India. They to make that India is that Pakistan is ready to resolve the and issue. It, 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 they, what they kind of, uh, what kind Pakistan. of uh, yeah. official? Yeah, I think they, they need to make that as official policy. So uh, thank you very much. And I I know there are so many contesting issues, and I know you know a lot of. Uh, People want to talk about so many other things, but of course, this today, and I know there are a lot of people who will be, um, uh, you know, uh, on here uh, on, in the comments as well, saying a lot of things. But the thing is, this focus of two days, three hours, is on Let Kashmir Decide campaign. And um, this campaign was uh, born out of a situation created by BJP Hinditwa government in the Kashmir, uh, which is occupied by India. And the uh, focus of this campaign, the core focus, remains to stop India from what they are doing to Kashmiris uh, right now um, in terms of uh, laws, in terms of physical violence, in, in, in terms of killings, in terms of lockdowns and communication uh, you know, uh, repression as well. So that is why I am trying to keep the focus on that. So uh, now, thank you very much. Uh, in, uh, hopefully, we will have we will have more opportunities to discuss these things in detail. And what's up? And thanks up. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I am too. Being a Kashmiri is my brother. <laughs> thank you very much. He's got a right to what I will say, as long as the people believe on club side. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks. Here, <laughs> here is some uh, dialogue. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank bye, you. Bye, bye everybody. Bye. Good luck. Bye, bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we already have uh, Tanvir Saab and uh, from oh 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 what is happening here? What is happening here? Not very nice, um, technically. <laughs> yes, you, you are off now, Laura, and uh, now, Sudar Anwar, you are off as well. 
and uh, I will bring Tanvir Ahmed when he's ready. Um, and uh, I, I don't have any other guests for the next uh, um, hour yet. Uh, we are expecting uh, uh, some more people uh, soon. And um, um, I have I have Tanvir, so I welcome Tanvir. Uh, welcome to the studio, Tanvir. You are not in lobby anymore. So um, thank you very much for joining us. And uh, the 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 flag is showing. What flag is that? Flag solidarity flag. I we will have some issues with connection from Dadal because it's, it's weak. Um, the connection connectivity is weak there. I think Shams. Yes. Um, yeah. Hi, Claire. Yeah. So, uh, Claire, now is only you. So, you can tell us while other people join, you can tell us a bit more uh, about the campaign and particularly what you want people to do in future, how, how they can support, how they can become part of it, how it can, how it can be made more effective. Yeah, I mean, I think right now for this solidarity event this afternoon, what we need people to do is to look for the petition that we've got to the United Nations, which sets out really clearly our strategies for what we want to happen and for solutions. We also, if you're joining us with a cup of tea, we want people to upload photographs of themselves with their tea, either to Twitter or to our group. And we're going to be presenting all the evidence of our journey along the way, plus any comments on this JKTV show any comments people can make all this evidence will be going to the united nations um you know we have the facebook group on uh, facebook if people can find okay. us i have tanvir again in the lobby so let me uh, see if uh, we can um, uh, get his contribution first because we don't know how long he can stay with us uh, he's already he's already disconnected all right okay he's there Tanvir, before you uh, disconnect, can you, um, you know, tell us about how you became aware of uh, Let Kashmir Decide campaign and uh, what you think of the situation, how to move forward? Can, can, can you can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can. Okay. Um, sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, I can. Sorry, when I'm using the earphones, uh, I'm not able. When I'm using the earphones, I'm not able to hear you. Okay, you carry on. Carry on and just tell so, us. Uh, if you say. can hear me, if you can hear me loud and clear, I'll I'll continue talking. Yeah? I can, I can, I can. Go on. Yeah. Yes, Tanvir. Right. Okay. Uh, I think you asked me something uh, about. Uh, okay. I think you asked me something about this initiative and how I got to learn about it, etc. So, um, yes, well, I have uh, seen it uh, initially in passing um, when traveling or traversing through social media. And then uh, a mutual friend of ours in Bradford, uh, he uh, introduced me to Claire. And um, I have uh, been uh, paying some attention to her work from time to time. And um, I, uh, frankly, was very astounded at um, her persistence and uh, her, uh, her energy, if you like. And um, I think something must have hit her dramatically uh, from a humanitarian point of view uh, to have embarked on uh, such a novel and, and such, a, um, such an engaging um, uh, initiative where um, you know, she's doing a lot of the work that uh, our diaspora that's been in England uh, for a good clear 50, 60 years 
uh, has really been unable to do. And um, I think uh, we should all uh, thank her uh, from the deepest parts, deepest parts of our hearts. And um, I'm sure this is something uh, which has strong fundamentals. And uh, it also has um, um, room for many different opinions. I mean, of course, my opinion uh, is quite different uh, in some respects, dramatically different from many of the other people on this panel. So that would be my beginning. Um, um, and, and I suppose that's an answer to your question. Um, apart from that, um, please um, either ask me the next question or allow yeah. me to uh, give my five minute speech that I've prepared uh, well, um, uh, earlier. Well, because today. there is there is the issue of sound. And um, so I'm not sure whether you can hear me. Um, I can hear you very clearly. You can. I, oh, I can hear you. That's great. I can that's hear you great. very clearly. I'm just. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to turn the uh, turn the fan off so that uh, hopefully you can hear me even okay, clearer. Meanwhile, I welcome uh, Amjad Hossein and uh, uh, and Sahaf Kashmiri Sahab. Uh, Amjad Hossein and Sahaf Kashmiri Sahab, welcome to the show. And uh, yeah. I am uh, talking to Tanvir at the moment because he is linked up from Dadial, uh, Azad Kashmir, and uh, signal is not very reliable. So I am giving him opportunity to say whatever he wants to say in next five minutes and then go. <laughs> you can you can stay, Tanvir. I'm just joking, but please, please carry on. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Shamsab, and thank you, Claire, as well. Um, um, I'm, I'm really, really. <laughs> okay. Um, th th there's, there's certain things that I want to say which are a little bit different um, from what um, other people have been saying. Um, I think, uh, first of all, uh, when you lay out um, whatever um, suggestion that one wants to make, I think. Um, you've got to look at the two opposites. For example, uh, I see uh, democracy and uh, what I describe as a high standard of governance as a conflict resolution mechanism. And this is what I've been practicing uh, myself on the ground here for the past 15 years. So essentially it's about converting a conflict economy. I mean, the economy in Jammu and Kashmir uh, revolves around uh, a conflict industry and uh, converting that into a peace uh, economy um, and uh, looking for ideas and uh, looking for practical suggestions uh, which will convert this into a peace economy is what we should all uh, concentrate on, in my opinion. So we're also looking about uh, converting from closed spaces on earth to open spaces. We're looking at converting from slavery to freedom. We're looking at converting from destruction to creativity. And importantly, we're also trying to move away from backdoor diplomacy to local people's reference. This is the terminology that I use. Um, and uh, literally moving away from a morbid, uh, deathly environment to one full of life, vitality, and culture, which is what we aspire to. No. Yeah. Sorry, we lost Tanvir because of the connectivity and uh, um, I, 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 I really apologize for that. And uh, let's, let's bring uh, Saaf Kashmiri Saab in. Saaf Kashmiri, how did you become part of this campaign? And, oh, and um, what is your role and uh, what, what, how you see uh, the campaign going forward? Uh, sorry, Saaf. thank you so much uh, yeah. for... Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me now? I can, yes, certainly. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Claire, and uh, the host of the program. Uh, I really apologize. I didn't hear your question because uh, there was some distortion. Can you repeat your question, please? Yeah, basically, how, how did you become uh, aware of uh, the Let Kishmi Decide campaign? And uh, in your view, uh, how we can move forward from here, be more effective? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, actually, um, I'm a human rights activist. I work for the human rights. And uh, I was introduced by one of my friends uh, to Claire. And uh, he actually introduced me and he uh, said, because obviously we are launching this campaign. 
and uh, we would like uh, if you're gonna join uh, us as well in this campaign. I said that's why no problem because this is uh, uh, this campaign is for all for the our motherland. So definitely, whoever gonna raise the uh, voice for the voiceless nation, so definitely we're gonna be second of them anyway. Yeah, whoever is uh, at the moment. Yeah. Uh, the second question is the campaign is very good. To be honest with you, I'm 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 happy because obviously because I was trying to connect today, but obviously I had some internet problem so i was connecting and this disconnect, disconnecting here yeah, but luckily now i'm connected with you guys and i'm very happy because obviously i have seen uh, uh, your guest today on the uh, you know the facebook page yeah, and i was listening to them as well uh, this this is very good opportunity be honest with you to bring uh, a different ideologies on one platform even if they are pro kashmiri if they are pro pakistani or even my my suggestion is if they are pro-Indians, yeah, so let's well, bring them as well on the table, yeah. Let's discuss about this issue. This is because this issue belongs to the people of Jammu and Kashmir. This is not belong to the India or not belong to Pakistan. This issue belongs to the people of Jammu and Kashmir. And we, the people of Jammu and Kashmir, have to decide our own future. So I'm very happy if you're going to bring all uh, like communities, even their pundits or even even their uh, Hindus or Sikh or Christian, whoever lives in Jammu Kashmir, we need to bring on table. We need to discuss with them. Even they are pro uh, Indians as well. We need to discuss with them as well. We, even if they're pro Pakistani, we need to discuss with them. Pro Kashmiri, a uh, lot of uh, organizations in UK and uh, Azad Kashmir and uh, uh, Indian occupied Kashmir. Uh, especially like Liberation Front and uh, in Azad Kashmir, Jammu Kashmir National Awami Party, National Student Federation, Le uh, Liberation Front. In UK, you can see different organizations work for the Kashmir cause. So we need to bring on one table. This is my personal uh, opinion and suggestion is we need to bring everyone on the table. We need to discuss whatever is uh, my decision or someone's decision that's going to be after where we're going to get the right of, for the plebiscite. That's my uh, uh, point of view. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Saab. And Tanvir is back. So obviously, Tanvir has a, a kind of uh, alternative view here uh, today. I think he wants to uh, present. And uh, welcome, Tanvir, back. And uh, uh, I have nothing to do with your disconnectivity. Please don't blame me. <laughs> and say and say and say what you are going to say. Please. No, <clears throat> right, okay. Well, uh, it just so happens that uh, this time uh, around 7 to 8 p.m. is uh, the sort of peak time or the most vulnerable time um, to use the internet. But uh, having said that, yes. So, I mean, what I was trying to say is that I don't think that we need to be naive about this problem. Uh, for example, it is very obvious that uh, for countries around the world and uh, the geopolitical world, world order, uh, it runs on um, uh, obviously a mutual economic interests and it doesn't necessarily uh, or absolutely run on, on sympathy and uh, trying to gain sympathy uh, for, for human rights, etc., will uh, gain you some mileage uh, in terms of um, uh, improving your lobby, if, if that's well, you know what you're looking for. But uh, given that we live in the most contested uh, region in the world, I mean, I would say it's the most precious uh, territory in the world. And uh, trying to get uh, the world's sympathy um, in order to um, resolve a problem which has uh, very clearly five major stakeholders apart from the sixth, and the sixth stakeholder is us, the people here. So you've got India, Pakistan, you've got Britain, America, and China. Um, so um, that's something uh, to, to, to bear in mind. And um, with reference to that reality, um, what I would like to say is that um, we, the people, if we want to move towards a solution, we need to be able to create um, initiatives uh, or solutions that um, attracts the world and which the world finds meaningful. For example, uh, water uh, is, is what the whole issue is about. And um, that water issue um, where India and Pakistan is competing over, 
it uh, tends to have been clouded by uh, religious sentiments or religious identity. And this is something which the British very carefully cultivated uh, during the time that they were directly ruling here. So um, in the Indians and Pakistanis um, need to uh, need obviously water solutions because if you look at how India and Pakistan have managed water, despite the fact that uh, they've had, um, um, you know, uh, people, military manning uh, the water channels throughout this territory. And also, incidentally, India also happens to have the highest rainfall in the world. So there's plenty of water running into India and there's plenty of water running into Pakistan. But if you look at how both countries have been managing that water, uh, it, I think is very clear, it is very clear that it's quite atrocious. So uh, by, having, uh, um, uh, 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 he by having heavy military in Jammu and Kashmir is uh, creating obviously a very big problem for the inhabitants here, but it's also doing no clear good for the people of India and Pakistan. So that's something that needs to be uh, uh, considered. And um, instead of uh, scaring the world about uh, impending nuclear war, if two countries go to war, I mean, they're not going to do that. Yeah, I mean, the repercussions for nuclear war, if either India or Pakistan were to take that step, uh, would be something which would mean destruction uh, for both countries, right? And, and maybe for other areas. So instead of uh, um, um, giving that canard, I think we should look towards water management and other aspects of governance. For example, I talk about uh, water management, I talk about waste management, I talk about soil management, and I also talk about a constitution which is strictly referenced by the people here. Now, if you look at uh, the uh, constitutional structure on the Indian side, and you look at the constitutional structure on the Pakistani side, uh, what you will find is that uh, there is a very clear absence of local reference. I mean, even the Brits, I mean, if you, if you go all the way back to the beginning of Gulab Singh's time, and we're talking around the late 1840s, I mean, the Brits, even at that time, used to send delegations uh, to the Valley of Kashmir, and they used to try and find out or ascertain um, what sort of problems the local people were facing. Right. And uh, even at that time, obviously, um, the real problems of the people were not able to surface. And when we look at things in 2020, uh, we haven't really moved forward. I mean, for example, going to the Indian side is obviously a big, uh, it's a big hurdle uh, for, for, for most uh, uh, civil uh, aspects of civil society anywhere in the world. Unless, of course, there are people that are in tune with the Indian narrative. And uh, coming on this side is also uh, very difficult because um, we saw with the uh, MPs delegation that came in February uh, to Muzaffarabad and um, they also visited courtly. But I can tell you uh, from personal experience that uh, meeting that delegation was also impossible. Right? So, so things from the late 1840s and 2020 haven't really changed. Uh, this is something that I'm trying to explain. And, um, you know, 150 years ago, we were trying to gain sympathy uh, from the colonial power or from other outside powers or regional powers. And today in 2020, our modus operandi is exactly the same. We're trying to gain sympathy. And, uh, you know, the world does not run on sympathy. Uh, that's something that we need to understand. And also, um, I talk about a neutral territory. I mean, if you look at Switzerland, uh, Switzerland had very similar problems to Jammu and Kashmir about 500 years ago and, and prior to that. Now, the Swiss people, through their own will and purely th through their own will, they decided not to get engaged and not to get involved in any of their neighbors' problems. Now, many of the people who have um, participated in this program today um, I mean, I'm not saying all of them, but certainly some of them are, are pandering to a particular lobby. Now, that lobby could be in the shape of Pakistan plus China at times, and maybe even a little helping hand behind the scenes by Britain and America. 
And on the other side, you have India and uh, you have a very strong relationship between America and India. You have a very strong relationship between Britain and India. Um, and you also have a very interesting relationship between China and India, one uh, which has a lot of economic stakes. So that means that, uh, I mean, China will only go to a certain extent uh, okay. to sympathize with Pakistan. Uh, it will not go to the extent where China's own interests okay, okay, uh, will be hurt. I have to, so Sanvi, therefore, I have to stop you uh, here. it is self-destructive when we Sanvi. pander to any particular lobby. You know, it's the same problem on the other side where a lot of our Hindu brethren... Uh, yes. Sorry, um, I, I heard you interject there, so that, therefore I stopped. Yeah, I, I have to stop you here. But please stay, stay connected because okay. I think... Uh, your connection is uh, relatively stable now, and uh, we will uh, have your views. We will need your I can views hear you. later. But I think here, um, I, w I want to bring in Claire. Claire, obviously, there are mo most of the panel people were uh, obviously on, on a, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of. Uh, so everything's gone quiet. I, I, I can hear you though. Uh, different narrative. Uh, Tanvir has slightly, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I think he has. Uh, 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 kind of uh, give the picture which was missing basically. It's not that people were not aware of it, but it was missing. So, um, and, and you say, you know, your main uh, theme is clear that there has to be a positive solution. So, what in your view is the positive solution, Claire? Because obviously, you are the. Well, campaign. I think. That is very, uh, I'm sure you will yeah. have something in your uh, there, vision. There, uh, yeah. what, what, what do you think is the positive uh, solution? Well, the negative side first, basically, is all the unity, all the different opinions, all the different versions means that people are um, separating on into their own solutions, their own beliefs. And um, we need to listen to every voice, every opinion, every voice. Absolutely. Um, but then there needs to be. So for my mind, instead of having opinion of, oh, this is a Pakistan lobby and this is this lobby and this is this lobby. It's all about Kashmiris. And you should recognize that you all have these different ways of this lobby or this view but somehow you know uniting on the fact that you want plebiscite regardless of whether you're then going to vote for independence or to go with Pakistan or to go with India so it's the solutions for me are using like supporting every ideology everybody has their own beliefs about this um, supporting every ideology but bringing them together and at the moment whether any of us like it or not what is happening in Indian occupied Kashmir is you know is above it transcends all opinions, you know, all narratives. That is just outright human rights abuse. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, Tanvi is right. You know, there's the sympathy element of this is happening for, for humanity. And a lot of people, I don't know why, they, they seem hardened to it or they don't take it on. So the solutions, again, it's picking bits out of what everybody's said, I think. So Paul Bristow was saying there about, um, moving forward with the guards of let Kashmir decide as a, you know, as a human right, as a basic human right, let Kashmir decide. And it removes everything. It removes all those antagonisms. And I guess it's seeing the different comments on the screen in terms of, well, this is from this view and this is from that view and this is from that view. And I want to somehow for people to accept the, all the different views and that they're all part of it because in some ways it's allowed the conflict to go on for as long as it had everybody's too busy putting down other people's opinions or views or perspectives and it's somehow finding that ingredient that, that recognizes all these Kashmiris are bound by blood they're bound by you know that desire for freedom and if we could somehow find that unity bring it all together uh, you know and build back towards the right for self-determination if we let Kashmir decide so many of these elements disappear but again you know I recognize the challenge we have here is against a world order you know tapping into what lots of people have said we've got a big challenge here a huge challenge but I do believe the people of the world if they want to make a difference can yeah. come together and make that difference um, and yeah. everybody is doing their own little bit in their and own way I, but i'd like I, to see I, unity yeah and i just tell uh, the to the uh, viewers that tanvir amund is uh, basically um, a british kashmiri he came to this country a very young age but then left about 13 years ago 
he he also uh, went on a humanitarian uh, i think um, uh, mission and then he he did he, he did not come back because and he is there for 13 13 years in the pakistani administrative side and he is looking at things from 15, very 15 very years. bottom up and uh, um, so obviously uh, he he his uh, um, uh, 13 years research in the in side of azad kashmir so obviously he he is looking at things from very close um and, and we will uh, uh, try uh, give uh, the need translation on to explain further but before that i i i think it's saf kashmiri saab's uh, turn to um you know give his uh, views that how we can be more effective and obviously you you said that uh, in your previous uh, um, uh, clip or you know in your previous uh, 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 contribution um, that you know we all need to come together but in britain particularly how we can be more effective uh, saf 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 yeah thank you uh, the first uh, and sorry, and sorry, uh, sorry 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 to interrupt but i think it's important to tell people that uh, afsha is trying to connect but for some reason she can't uh, i can see her name but no connection and uh, um yeah so uh, please if you are trying keep trying hopefully you will get connected and yes go on saf kishmiri saf thank you uh, actually you know uh, the main thing is we lives in uk uh, we are here in uh, uh, uk and uh, the people from jammu and kashmir uh, who lives in the uk actually this is our responsibility to bring everyone on one platform even if they are pro kashmiri even if they are pro pakistani or even if they are from pro indians some are here from the indian occupied kashmir but obviously they are not pro indians but some are pandits or uh, the different uh, community they uh, are pro indians but we need to bring on one platform as well because this is our fundamental right to discuss our future because uh, this is not very easy because there's a three superpowers are behind you pakistan india and china they all three trying to uh, actually you know the uh, they are actually fighting in the jammu and kashmir because the uh, the brother tanveer uh, explains the the main thing is water resources as well and there are so many things like borders and everything because uh, obviously they have to uh, you know the uh, look after their own lands as well because of this jammu and kashmir but who is sacrificing we the people of jammu and kashmir are sacrificing at the moment especially the people of indian occupied kashmir they are dying every single day because i'm originally from indian occupied kashmir because uh, i'm from the divided family my father is from srinagar my mother from uh, azad kashmir so i know the both sides i have my old family members there my grandparents are still there so i know the problems there what's going on every single day there there are so more than 18000 the youngsters are in prison at the moment after 5th of august so how many women have been raped by indian forces how many children been killed now every single day they burn houses everything so we need to discuss this issue on a very serious notes especially in the in uk we need to bring every single uh, uh, like diaspora or every single community every single uh, uh, you know the, the people who are belong to any other organization any uh like any group any lobby we need to bring together we need to discuss we need to be move forward together i know mm. it's very hard because everyone it's very hard i know and the mirva is smiling because it's very hard to bring in everyone on one single platform but we have to try for this one because this is your a, that, your sound only... your sound reaches to him about, after about 50 seconds so not necessarily smiling at what you're saying now <laughs> you said few minutes <laughs> <laughs> go on go on sir yeah so that's why i was explaining that we need to bring every no every no uh, no i can i can listen to him okay. yeah thank you because okay. yeah. uh, you know i appreciate let me explain like, i appreciate the mir the mir bhai i never spoke with him before but be honest with you i know his work i know where is he from what, what he done especially when he was arrested in muzaffarabad so i know because i lived on the same place where he was arrested yet yeah? so we used to we used to do the protest there as well so i know because the the problem is you cannot raise your voice be honest with you uh, like like a, like a humans you have to be you have to raise your voice uh, like 
one lobby. If you are with any lobby, yeah, then you're gonna be um, uh, you're gonna be happy uh, in India and Pakistan side, or Ch even not China, but India and Pakistan and Kashmir. But in the UK, you don't have any restrictions. This is actually democracy here. You have uh, all your rights here. You can raise your voice. My, uh, my I, I can request to all uh, single individuals who are raising voice for the people of Kashmir, like Jammu Kashmir, or the people who are uh, doing any with lobby and they need to uh, come together on one platform. This is my request to everyone. And this is the best opportunity if we're going to come together. That's the right time to need to come together. Because if we... If you if you're not coming together now, if you if you if we can't discuss at the moment, so might be uh, we gonna lose a lot of things here at the moment. So this is the right time. So we need to come out and raise our voice for the people of Jammu and Kashmir, for the solidarity and all. Not only for the Jammu, not only for the Valley. We need to discuss everything. Jammu, Kashmir, Gilgit, Baltistan, Ladakh, everything. We need to be come together for all parts of Jammu Kashmir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Saf uh, Kashmiri. And uh, Amjad is uh, uh, Amjad gets connected, then disconnects. Amjad as well. So I, I, I'm sorry. And uh, about Afshan, the message comes that she needs to connect her mic and uh, uh, video, audio and video, before she can be uh, joined in. So maybe she's not uh, allowing. Uh, the system to use her mic and uh, video, uh, so maybe uh, she needs to uh, she needs uh, she needs to get that message clear. Okay, so Tanvir, uh, obviously uh, I I stop you because I think if one person goes on for too long, uh, you know it's not fair on the viewers. So that, that is why, and I wanted to uh, connect to you now. But let's let's uh, let's go to Claire. Yes, Claire. Um, so, so obviously, I think the main challenge in future is that uh, how, like Saf said, oh, uh, at the moment it is like I think we are used to, and I, I, I understand it's where we're coming from. We are used to only focus on one idea or one uh, ideology which we support, and that's say uh, everything. Like you know, like it is obviously in politics it happens. Well, I think um, we uh, are now getting opportunities to uh, have interaction with people of different viewpoints, and you know because of social media and uh, and, and be before geographically, obviously, it's very difficult to um, come from one side to other. So, uh, social media, I think a lot of people from different regions are uh, talking to each other. So, I think awareness is also increasing about other regions. Uh, rather than stereotyped uh, understandings of which were fed by the controllers. So things are uh, uh, changing. But but I think the important point Saf made is that in Britain, we there is a, a, a stronger or greater possibility to bring people of different views on one platform. And uh, um, I think that would be interesting if, uh, if, if, if uh, you know, I, I have so far, have you managed to bring uh, our, our link up with the uh, people of different views to bring uh, you know onto this platform Claire? yeah yeah absolutely and i mean hopefully i think you can see it throughout this show with the people here with the, the different views there are many active groups in the uk as well as across the world but i mean some of the watching people this morning get ready for the event there are many already tweeting on twitter there's uh, people sort of making their placards outside their houses there's big support i think as well what sahaf said there about you know there is the opportunity here to link with peace groups um, and other organizations as well not just the Kashmiri diaspora so we can go first but yes everybody regardless of their belief or view I think if we make it about humanity you know and, and then that removes a lot of the different ideologies below it it's a little bit how we've got the cross-party representation in Parliament from you know the Conservatives from the Tories SNP and Labour all coming together because this is about humanity and about a human rights crisis and pulling out of what different people said you know Tanvir's research that he's done over years and as I have said there that ability the freedom of voice is not as granted so much over there so even bringing it here we can unite all that we've not had social media before as a weapon 
So why can't we, you know, in a, it's taken 70 years to get here. India are moving at a very fast rate or the Indian government with a domicile law and we've got to go fast. And the only way we can make a difference is to unite, is to come together for humanity uh, and push forward. I mean, interestingly, you know, the Indian viewpoint, I've been in dialogue. They're very difficult on the whole to engage with. They usually just call your names and you don't get very far. But I have been dialoguing with an Indian supporter, but very democratically, putting across one another's views and that you can learn so much from that and one another can learn so much from that so we're both trying to persuade one another what's right you know and come into those so it so have as uh, for me has said a lot of important uniting things there recognizing basically the talents and the research and everything that everybody has done that is recognizing that is not right and is not just about this situation and let Kashmir decide solves it all you know it solves it all and once Kashmir is get their decision it's not for me to say you know I support all the ideologies I've got great respect for every ideology but at the same time I don't promote one ideology because for me it's about unity and how we can unite everybody regardless of your view thank you thank you Claire and uh, Tanvir, Tanvir uh, can you hear me He'll probably hear you tomorrow. <laughs> this, uh, uh, yeah. Yes, absolutely. I can loud and clear. Okay, good. Uh, let's let's try uh, to put you. Yes, I can. Uh, I can hear you loud and clear. And another question. Yeah. Okay. So so Tanvir. Uh, no, what, I can what, hear you. I okay. can hear you. Yeah. So what is your uh, <clears throat> advice to the campaign, or what you will suggest yes. that uh, it you know to become more effective? Uh, and inclusive. What you what you uh, s suggest from your experience, of course. Okay. Right. <clears throat> right. Okay. Um, I think. Uh, our people have uh, certain uh, inherent weaknesses uh, which have uh, prevented us from progressing over the past so many decades. And I think uh, one of those problems is that um, we love to talk at each other. We have not developed the skill and knack of talking to each other. We, we, we have a habit, the people of Jammu and Kashmir, especially people in Azad Jammu and Kashmir, have a, a very strong habit of talking at each other. Um, this is something that you know, we need to overcome. Um, that, 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 that's one thing that should be clear. And uh, because this uh, mission or, or this initiative is uh, all about bridging narratives, yeah, um, you've got to be able to bridge uh, 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 narratives, even extreme po poles. You've got to get them together onto some sort of common understanding. And uh, if I may say so, um, a lot of the countries in Europe and um, the West in general um, do have this knack of uh, developing consensus despite people being... Uh, uh, very, very as a, 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 averse to each other. Whereas uh, we as Muslims, I mean, I'm, I'm generalizing a bit here, but I find that uh, we have a very big problem in this uh, respect. Uh, we find it very hard to even um, think about the fundamentals of consensus. So with reference to uh, Claire Bidwell's uh, initiative, I think the most important thing is to ensure that it's um, sustainable, yeah? This must be sustainable at all costs. Um, it's better to do a little bit regularly um, than to try and do um, a lot of big things in a short space of time. And I think long, longevity and persistence and consistency uh, will, will generate that sustainability 
And uh, I think over time, she also, I, I think, uh, I have this impression that a lot of the people that she's met uh, are mostly people from either uh, the Pakistani control side of Jammu and Kashmir, or she's met Pakistanis. And, um, and it's quite uh, obvious that uh, many Indians, especially hardline Indians, uh, would be very allergic to such an initiative. So I think one of the challenges will be that uh, how do you get um, to talk reasonably uh, in a democratic frame of mind uh, with those people who, for example, are very much, you know, on the, on, on, on the Indian accession side, for example? Or how do you talk to those people who were Hindus and Sikhs who were forced to migrate from uh, AJK in 1947? Um, how do you talk to the people of Gilgit, Baltistan, who have always felt marginalized? They have felt marginalized by the Pakistani government. They have felt marginalized by the people of the Valley of Kashmir. They have felt marginalized by the people of AJK. So, um, you know, there's a lo lot of work that needs to be done to, um, to move towards bridging narratives. And I think, uh, in a nutshell, uh, sustainability, uh, is very important for this uh, particular initiative and reaching out to all those various other narratives that exist uh, within the territory of Jammu and Kashmir. These, they are, these are key components, I think. Mm. Yeah, uh, Claire, your mic is mute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I know that uh, uh, Claire uh, definitely have a lot of members from the Indian side of Kashmir, particularly from Valley. And okay. uh, the first person okay. she met... Uh, who became the link of uh, uh, initiating this was a yes, uh, yes. buddy from Kashmir Valley. So I think she has uh, from both sides. But uh, uh, how, how, how about other suggestions, uh, Claire? Uh, and because we, we have about 10, 10, 15 minutes to finish the, uh, uh, this whole uh, transmission. Yeah, I mean, what would be good, Shams? I know you said we've got 10 minutes. I think we've got Javad's message and the last tune as well, so we can stop our talking in a couple of minutes. Um, to, to develop on from what Tanvir said, I mean, I've got, as similar to what Laura from USA said earlier, I mean, I get accused of being in all camps, so which is interesting. Um, but it's trying to bring together all those different camps, and I mean, that's what I'm here for, and that's what I want to do. I'm not, my job is not to tell anybody how to do anything, and I think it became accidental this process i just wanted to have a solidarity event i just wanted to show kashmir that the world cared and you know with regard to that it was you know from the because of the indian government's atrocities um it was javad from cotley azad that was the one that we connected it was his idea to start the facebook group and we had this thing of the uh, the voice on the inside that had reached the voice on the outside so it's always trying to keep that communication there but build it and grow it um and so for me you know the indian government i do think are moving at a very fast rate and that concerns me because if they keep doing that then all these narratives they're not going to matter they're not going to care because india are going to have Kashmir and uh, Kashmiris will never get Kashmir so there's a kind of a you know but the pacing is right my next moves my next ideas or our team's next ideas are within countries are to build together networks close networks at ground root levels um Again, it's all people's different ideas that come together to this. This wasn't my idea, but somebody suggested what we now do is we use strong Kashmiri voices from the diaspora, regardless of their ideology, but for humanity in regions. So in the UK, in different regions, and then we build it in towns so that we can put pressure on councils and then on our governments. And if we've got that same model going on across Europe, in towns and countries in Europe, then we're pressuring our governments the governments then the UN and that we can get UN functional we can get our governments functional and okay. you know just yeah, so yeah you, so this is mainly diaspora uh, initiative and uh, um, it, it it is you know from here obviously uh, things look slightly different from uh, than from inside uh, so yeah that, and, and obviously that debate goes on and on and it, it should do, and uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, there, there is nothing wrong with it. Different uh, narratives always contest in any society. There is no one narrative. It's contestation, and that continues. Uh, obviously, like Tanvir said, if we talk to each other, 
uh, that maybe um, uh, makes the um, uh, contestation a bit more productive. So yeah, definitely, there's a lot to learn from everybody, for everybody. Uh, and uh, thank you very much, Tanveer, because we are just coming to end of the show. And uh, but I'm sure we will do many more, more shows, uh, and uh, we will discuss things in detail and particularly your experiences and observations uh, in the Pakistani administration Kashmir. And uh, uh, obviously, you have produced already a lot of data on that. So yes, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, I can see Sadar Anwar Sahib in lobby. Um, and but I think he's there to listen because uh, I don't know whether he can not watch on Facebook in Dubai. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. And uh, uh, Claire, uh, we will, I think, uh, uh, I will give you to conclude the, sh the whole transmission. And then I am not sure if Talat is around to play the video. So you, you, you better conclude and then uh, I, I will ring uh, Talat if he did not play to play it on the program finishes. Oh, well, I mean, just, I think all has been said, Shams, thank you for your job. I know there was some technical hitches there. You did really well with them and, and thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, grateful thanks to everybody that's taken part. Our aims were to stand in solidarity, drink tea with the world around Kashmir, raise awareness. And I hope that, I think we've done that. So I think everybody here that's contributed can feel really proud. And, you know, to Kashmiris everywhere and those suffering in Indian occupied Kashmir right now, you know, the world's thinking of you we're all doing our best what we can and you know we'll just build on this now and go forward um so grateful thanks to everybody thank you thank you thank you very much and thank you very much for the uh, you know uh, watching this show <coughs> and for all your comments a lot of people have commented and i'm sorry because uh, it is not very uh, feasible or possible I, I i use all all the comments because there are too many and uh, mm -hmm. In, in, in a program where, uh, you know, there, there are multiple guests, it's a bit tricky. But uh, thank you very much. I have shown some of them uh, which were very relevant to what we were talking about. And, uh, um, and all the best, Claire. And that is all we had for uh, this uh, today's uh, special uh, transmission on uh, our special streaming on JK TV. And thank you very much uh, for all the uh, support uh, from Talat, despite some uh, hiccup. But um, uh, I think we managed to at least uh, carry it through. So thank you very much and uh, goodbye for now. Hello, I am Jawad Kyum from Azad Kashmir. Today is the 300 day of illegal occupation and lockdown of Kashmir by the Indian government. We all are united in solidarity with Kashmir. Our aim is to raise awareness all walks of life with different views on Kashmir under the referendum agenda for the right to let Kashmir decide their own future. Today in this event, we have done our best to do that. Thanks to all the friends and colleagues who supported us in this campaign. Inshallah, this struggle will continue and we people from all over the world will become our team for Kashmir and for humanity. We will continue to rise our voice for the oppressed brothers and sisters, inshallah, through tea with bring friendship and unity. God bless everyone and encourage us to fulfill this care duty for freedom. Welcome and thank you.
of the white guys like it and click on following and click on see first then you will get all the new notifications and updates